sicker. So, Johnny, did you want to, like, shout out to anyone? <laughs> I don't know, do I? <laughs> Give a shout out to Virginia, come on. Virginia Boyton. Yeah. My people. Like, thanks for the listens, like, far out, man. Look. Yeah, a lot of listens from Boyton, Virginia. Yeah. So, we, we are paying attention. Like, I want to know, who's... I know how Boyton, Virginia found us. So would I. Right in. Like, how did you guys, like... Oh, actually, that's something I want to Boy- ask. Boyton, I'm coming for some American pie. Some mum and pa's American pie. <laughs> a slice of American, yeah, yeah. baby. It's, Ameri- <laughs> it's America's cup of cup. When I come over, I'm gonna when I when I go to America, I'm gonna make a little stop down in Boynton, Virginia. Absolutely. No, no. Oh, you're right. Look at it, man. It's like <clears throat> it looks like a really nice little town. Yeah, like, man. No, I want to know. I want to know how they they've, they came on to us, like yeah. came up to yeah, and found us and all that sort of stuff. I want to ask uh, anyone out there who follows us on social media what they would want to see on our website. Yeah. Cool. You know what I mean? Yep. Because, I mean, just going by what you'd normally put, it's just, you know, links to the episodes, quick bio, blah, blah, blah. You've already done a fucking sweet job, by the way, but Thanks, um, yeah, a little bit of extra insight would be but cool. But, yeah, just if anyone actually wants anything in particular, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what people would want to find, because I don't know who's gonna actually going to use it other than a hub to just get to our episodes. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, we can buy land in... Like a porn hub. Wait <laughs> in Virginia, an acre lot for $9,000. Oh, there's your American. You're kidding. Uh, there's your there's your country dream, Two, Nicholas. One acre lot for nine and a half grand. We'll get a lot. We'll grow some veggies. Go hunting. Can, that's that's do actually some, pretty do some fishing. I'll make my drift track. You know what, man? I had the idea. <laughs> Go camping on like, the land. Sick, Honestly, man, man yeah. I had the idea ten years ago, nine years ago, when I went to Cambodia. We were we saw a lot of uh, plots of land up for sale just as as you left CM Reap yeah. and started uh, not CM uh, yeah CM Reap North. As you left Team Reap and started heading into like the jungle area towards Angkor Wat, mm-hmm. there were a lot of like for sale signs in like West in English writing and Cambodian. And I remember saying to my mate, I go, we should buy a plot of land out here just, just for fun. That'd be cool. And I was looking at, Indi- uh, I was working with Indians and I asked them what it costs to buy like a plot of land in India, like from whatever major city they were from, like nothing. Like you could buy a tiny little lot for like next to nothing. I thought, how funny would it be to have, I, this is what I said to him, I go, I'd love to buy it and just put a banner there like a billboard with like my website on it because oh that sign won't be there for more than 48 hours <laughs> man with no one monitoring the joint you, you said um anchor what mm. did you go to that the, the floating, yeah where they the floating, filmed our tomb raider yeah the floating um it's on the that big temple yeah yeah you went there and saw it yeah oh that's cool the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i've only watched docos on it but i always thought yeah, yeah no no I went, <clears throat> you roll up i remember um yeah because we were walking up to like the main thing and there's just like random cows and shit everywhere and just yeah whatever and I remember my ex was like, oh, it's a bit boring. I go, what did you want? Carnival rides and Steve Irwin fucking just going, <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a cow here. Like, it's fucking Cambodia, man. And was the temple itself really cool to witness? Like, see? Yeah, like, it's it's surreal. Do you know what I mean? Because I think, I think Aussies get a real kick out of going, like, say, Southeast Asia. Because, like, I mean, in proximity, it's the, one of the closest sort of areas you it's, can go it's to. It's so outside different. Of, outside of NZ. It's so different. I mean? Yeah, and you, like we said, you know, Captain Cook came here, you know, how many years ago? A couple hundred years ago. Mm. But Angkor Wat has been there for thousands of years. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. And it's Eastern culture. It's not Western culture. It's Eastern, you know, so it's completely different. Yep. So it's a 180, man. Like, it's fucked up. But that's the thing. Like, some people don't give, like, some people don't care about anything mm. like that. Mm. Do you want to, actually, do you know what I was, I was watching? Um, I was watching, Kel, you know, Kelsey Grammer, like the actor from, from Frasier. I watch Frasier every day, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I was watching him. He was doing some interviews on, um, it was on, uh, I can't say I'm not a fan because I never watch it, but I just don't think I'd be a fan. <laughs> it's actually dry. It's, a quite it's really dry. I reckon you'd like it. It's the one with her at the bar, right? No, that's Cheers. That's Cheers. He plays oh. the same character. Cheers Frasier is Craig. awesome. So Cheers. Oh, Frasier's in the high rise building. Yeah. yeah, Cheers yeah. was set in Boston, yeah. right, somewhere in, in Massachusetts and then anyway. He, he was, he he was, was played like, Fraser Crane, yeah. and then he let, they spun him off into his own show. Which actually was Which really went successful. for longer, yeah, one of the most successful. Just called Fraser. Yeah. It's called Fraser, yeah. and he moves to Seattle. Seattle. I've yeah. literally never watched an episode. Really cool, man. Like, no, I like you, it. you would like it. Okay. Yeah, Melbourneans, Australians just like Fraser, yeah. man, because it's really dry. It's culture. It's a cultured sort of show. Yeah. Like, yep. it's not... It's such a standard. It's not sitcom. overly done. It's just a no. It's good. It's really yeah. dry. Yeah, cool. But I was watching. He, he had two interviews. One on um, uh, what's his name? What's it? What's the the talk show host? There's two talk show hosts right now that are killing it. Conan O'Brien. Yeah. And there's that fat dude from England. Yeah, no, nah, not him. <laughs> Who's the other? I I, I remember Jimmy his Kimmel. name. There's Kimmel. Who's the Graham. other guy? Oh, James Gordon and then, and then John something. The other English guy. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the about. other English guy. Um, I keep forgetting the name of him, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I, I remembered it when I was at work the other day because I was talk- telling someone else Does about this. Does he have that this. talking skeleton thing? 
No, oh, is that a Scottish guy? That, that's, that's the Scottish that's, guy. No, 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 no. That's the guy from Drew Carey show. Yeah, not not yeah. him. He, he retired. He retired and then gave his show to the guy I'm trying to reference. Okay. But I was talking about Kelsey Grammer and his development of uh, Sideshow Bob, like where he got the voice from. Yep. And he was talking about how he was friends with this old... John Stewart? No. No, that's who I was no, thinking no. of. It's John thinking Stewart's Craig, as well. Or Craig Ferguson. Craig, you're thinking of Craig Ferguson. Yeah, I'm thinking of Craig Ferguson, but I know who you're talking about. So if, you look, if, you like, if you look up Kelsey Grammer, Sideshow Bob on YouTube, it'll come up. His two interviews. I don't even know why I'm... <clears> refer- oh, I brought it up because I was, I was watching, and he starts going on about where he developed the character from, and he said he was watching this old actor who used to talk in these really, like, theatrical sort of tones. Yeah. And um, he said he was painting the guy's house one day, and he came in and was telling a story, and then he said this one line about, like, some kid. And he did it in, like, this Sideshow Bob-esque sort of voice. And he just loved it. And, he says, and he said to himself, yeah, this that's guy. The voice. He goes, that's the voice. I'm going to use this guy one day. And he ended up using it for Bart. Dude, no, for, for Sideshow Bob. For Sideshow Bob, yeah. Anyway. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And then, because I was, you know how I told you I've been going through the voiceovers to clean them up, and I thought, I, there's a one where you start talking about character voices and how people do Simpson voices and how you get into character and all that sort of shit. Yes, yes. Yeah, mind you, I've been, all week, because of you, you cunt, all week, I ended up watching another video of Dan Castellaneta and Harry Shearer for, from the same thing, like a Conan, another Conan episode, or Conan or someone, I can't remember who it was. And they're doing, they're riffing off each other in their voices. Oh, cool. And because of you, I literally spent all week trying to do Homer because you said that you could never land. So it. hard. Yeah. <laughs> You're a cunt. Like, I've, I'm telling you, I've been walking around all week trying to do Homer's voice. Like, it's so fucking hard. Oh, dude, we used to get stoned and just sit there all having shots and just like cracking up because it would just sounded nothing like it at all. Well, a, but you know what you have to do? You have to watch, um, Dan Castellaneta and actually watch how he's doing it because he's like, he sinks into his own body. The whole, because Homer's like voice comes, it's sort language. of like pinched. <clears throat> And it's like, <laughs> it's just funny. Like I spent, you're a cunt. So are you going to uh, whip one out for us? Give us a no, no, no. I'm not bringing it up because I wanted to do Homer's voice. I'm bringing it up because That's I was going to do it. You want to do Homer's voice? Yeah. Well, why are you laughing at me? That's going to be funny. Huh? Unless you nail it, and I'm surprised. <laughs> now, now he's just put me on the spot. Where like I know I'm going to fuck it up. You don't. Miss over. <laughs> I ain't my glue. Come on, Marge. Can I go back to work now? <laughs> not bad, not bad. Better, better than I thought it would be. Not bad at all. I couldn't do that. It all depends on what he says, because yeah. you got to say something really Homer-esque. And that's, that's what he does, because he does... It's Harry Shearer and Dan Castaneda, and Harry Shearer starts going on about... Um, he does Mr. Burns' voice, and he's telling him that he's, he's sacked. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, Homer, oh, yeah, yeah. Homer you're, 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 <laughs> you consider yourself um, dismissed or something. Yep. And he's like, yeah. And then, like, he does, he's like, what, what the hell does that mean? And then, like, Smithers says, I'm like, I think you're, I don't think that means you're dismissed. <laughs> he's like, oh, can I go back to work now? Yeah. And then I just cracks up. Like, nice. it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> nice. Well, my whole fucking point was, yeah. <laughs> was, he's, Kelsey Graham is talking about Sideshow Bob and he's saying how Sideshow Bob is cultured. Yep. He's a cultured sort of yeah, character. Yeah, 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 big time. Loves the finer things in life. Yeah, uh, not even finer, but just. At, uh, refined things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Lots of theatre. Do, cons- <laughs> do you consider us cultured? I Think can, about I it. I consider you guys more cultured than me. Why? Because no. you've been more places, you've experienced no, no, more things. Culture doesn't necessarily mean you've travelled. You know, fucking Bogans travel to Bali every year, man. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're cultured, because I'll go to Bali and all I'll do is drink. Yeah. I won't actually go see a temple or anything. Yeah. Actually, and yeah, no, I come to think of it, I kind of am because I'm into, I yeah, research like, a lot of shit. That's what document. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You do read. Like, you fucking read. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking. <clears> like, cause just from them saying Sideshow Bob was a cultured sort of dude, so that that's why he had to have that really mm. fucking sing-songy sort of voice. Yep. So then, what makes someone cultured? Would you consider us cultured? Do you know cultured people? Like, do you talk to your mates and think, fuck, these guys are, like, so more worldly than us? Or do you talk to your mates and think, like, you fucking don't know shit. You are my mates. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my mates outside of you guys, I'd say not cultured. <laughs> okay. As in, I'd say my dad is, like, the person I think yeah. of as the most cultured. But he deals with he, a lot of people. He grew up he's... in Thailand. He can speak, like, a bunch of languages. Um, what does he speak? Oh, he can speak a lot of Greek. He speaks Thai fluently as well as he speaks English. A full Thai. He can. Oh, dude, he speaks Thai as well as he speaks English. Wow, fluently. Fuck. That's fluently. amazing. Yeah, so he he I can barely speak Thailand. English. <laughs> he spent Seventeen years of his life in Thailand, just growing up on the streets of Thailand. Really? Yeah. So when we go out for like dinner at Thai restaurants, he just like starts. It's like a whole big thing. Like it's like he's talking to them in Thai. That is so cool. Goes that'd be fucking cool. Goes and speaks to the chefs in Thai and stuff. It's Have really you guys gone on a holiday so like as a family to Thailand? Yeah. 
And he's, you guys would be sweet. Yeah, remember yeah, he, he, had knows, the, he, he had the knows. home videos of him just crying by oh, a pool. That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. been like I a, haven't forgotten about that either. I want to see this tape. Yeah, so what was like he doing there? This is interesting. Like, what was he like, just, is this when he was a kid? Yeah, so, uh, born in England. Yeah. And my grandparents were obviously in, the, obviously in England. Um, and then my grandfather owned like a glass company, which, uh, they had a company move over to Thailand. Yeah. And he went and headed it. He's so cool, man. And you know, grew up there. Grew up there, yeah. So he wow, man. Like, he's experienced it from like the ground up. Like, so you'd say he's street. definitely cultured. Yeah, big time. Like I think of my dad when I th- think of cultured people. I think of my yeah, dad. Yeah, that is cool as. But that's what I mean. Like how many of our fr- like because I can speak for say my friends, right? And a lot of them, yeah, do travel. And then a lot of people do go to the theatre. A lot of people do go to see movies. Yeah, see a films, lot of my friends. Concerts. Nah. And- yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I got mates that don't just go to the cinemas to watch Fast and Furious Eight. They'll go to like indie flicks and mm. I don't have foreign movies. You know what I mean? I have hardly, I have hardly any friends. Like, <laughs> hardly any friends like that, dude. They're happy just to stay yeah, in the gully. Yeah, but if you're in the gully, like there's, <clears throat> you sort of. Yeah, but is, is that there, because? Yeah, I was going to say, is that because they're a creature of habit and you're talking bit. about Darrow like druggy mates, or you're talking about just everyday just random, people, random creatures jokes. Creatures of habit and just the way they've been raised, like well, not to really care too much about other cultures and stuff like that. Well, you're 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 a product of your own environment. So if you grow up in that environment. Like, yeah, well, that's what I mean. My dad was always an yeah. influence on me, like, just teaching me about different stuff. It's pretty cool. But that's what worries me about, like, say, Melbourne, for example, because we've got some of the best, like, art sort of uh, institutions. Mm. We've got museums. We've got, like, we've got a cultural hub. Like how many people have, you reckon, have been to the museum? But that's what I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was there last, uh, the last time I went to the museum, like, the Melbourne Museum, was a year ago. You know, we're actually, like, around the corner from it. Like, from here. Yeah, we're dude, actually it's walking the distance from here, man. We're actually around the corner. So, oh, oh like, I went a year ago. Yeah. A year ago for, yeah. for an exhibit. So or gents, anyone, should huh? we go for a little tour of the museum after here? <laughs> oh, you'd wanna, we shall. You want to you'd <laughs> go when there's a specific exhibit in town. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I went Johnny, to a, Johnny's going to have on there Johnny's dongs. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just sculptures of different shaped dongs. Yeah, yeah but it's still People an, would go. That's still an exhibit. Absolutely. You'd have to book a ticket to and go to. I'll hand make them all with clay, like the ghost. Oh, you mean your own sculptures? Yeah, my own, my own. Oh, you're <laughs> fucked. This is the kinked penis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, is, this is called unusual. Penis of wrath, yeah. <laughs> unusual. Yeah, what do you call that? The wrath. Just have a look at it. Yeah. It's a little unusual. It's just unsettling, something unsettling. But, uh, but yet I can't look away. <laughs> <laughs> it comes, it wears like the beret striped. So Johnny what, was, Johnny, what was the uh, influence on this? It's actually mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was painting a self-portrait one day and, uh, and then decided to make it a sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> and I've called it the unusual. <laughs> no, but, but that, that's what I mean. You, like, I find it strange. The unusual. <laughs> I think about it. Because like, even the dude that this today that was driving the Beamer in the convertible, like suit, flicking on his phone... The first thing I thought of was, I wonder what he's like looking at in his phone, like peak hour traffic, stocks. 10 o'clock. Is he looking up stocks or is he just on like Tinder or some shit? Just Probably looking scrolling. up big naturals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big naturals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just because he's got a suit on and he's driving a Beamer doesn't mean he's any more cultured or fucking... Yeah, it could be the most dude. devious, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. That, that, that suit could have been from Lowe's. That car's on finance. Yeah, it could yeah, yeah, yeah. have Hungry Jacks every yeah, night. You, never, yeah, you, know, you, you don't know. know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Point. I yeah, find yeah. that shit interesting. Like, yeah, exactly yeah. what you just yeah, said. Yeah, I yeah. find it fucking interesting. And mm-hmm. I always cop it when I'm on a train or something and I'm just people watching. I just look at cunts like, I wonder what this cunt does. Yeah, I wonder what she's doing. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think it's important for people to be cultured? As in, because re- for me, I think it's important, like, as far as... I th- yeah, I think if you want to grow as a person, it's Yeah, yeah and it's reinvesting mm. in the community, like, as well. I mean, going to, like, museums and supporting art, supporting yeah. culture, like, all that sort of yeah, shit. Yeah, well, you're it's not important. closed off to... But also, yeah. I love knowing things. Yeah. Like, just about different things. Yeah. It's not, it's not, like, I just find it selfish, like, you are who you are, you live here, you work, and you go home. I just find that, like, weird, like, I love to know about different There's cultures, so much different more. countries, different things. Dude, like, just yeah. random stuff. There's so much learning you can do, yeah. like, without even having to get off your couch. You don't have to get off your couch. Yep. You want to be a couch potato? Go for it. But read. Just look things up. Yep. Like, expand your mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, totally, man. You know I what I mean? Like, I, just, I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, because if you look something up, you think, oh, what does that mean? Or you click on that. And then it leads you onto like, yeah. different pages and different this. And that's pretty much what I do all yeah, the time, yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, my, my mom, I've said it before, like, my mom literally works to save her money and go overseas like every year 
Your mum's been there's, to like how many countries? Dude, she, she, she killed it. She's like, been to Korea. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh yeah, she went. Yeah, yeah. Like recently. she's been to more, <clears throat> like countries every year, like new places. You know what I mean? She didn't like she went to where was she? Uh, Hungary, Budapest. Yeah, man. Like, you know what I mean? Russia. Like she's gone all these joints, but then in her free time, she's always going to like just random seminars, like in the city, like some fucking speaker. Like she saw Stephen Fry with my sister. Oh, cool! I like yeah. Stephen Fry. Yeah. Like every every week, like I'll try and catch her. I'm like, hey, I'm coming past to you know drop some food off or something. I'm like, oh, I won't be home. Yeah. I'm like, where are you going? Oh, there's a seminar or a lecture in a fucking museum. Or that's really where cool. Where are you man. going? Poland. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like literally. That's literally. Really, that's really cool. Yeah. Keep, yeah. keep the mind sharp as well. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like mm. that should be important. But do they teach that in school? No. Do they teach you to be cultured? No. Like, as in, do they... They didn't at my school. <laughs> they, they try and force they you to do extracurricular activities, but do they actually encourage greater, higher learning? You know what I mean? As in... Depends the school you go to. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, are there school schools? Now? Like, because... I, I, I don't know. Like, like that's now, at public schools, I think they're getting better. Like, public schools are getting better and stuff like that. But when we were at school, I don't think they... They were trying to get us to... Do a trade, <laughs> like yeah, the, yeah. be a plumber, be a, be a sparky, you know, be whatever. But they never told us go travel, see the world, or actually, because they always thought we were like on uh, morning TV this morning, man. Before I came here, I was eating my cereal. <laughs> I was watching morning TV, and I just I turned on like I got half half of a debate, you know, as I, as I've tuned in, and she was this woman was saying something about she's sick of homework, like excessive homework and shit like that being brought home. And forcing kids like to to do like homework, like repeating what they apparently did at school, or whatever. Yeah. And she would prefer greater, uh, far more effective teaching. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. How about you pay your teachers more? Yeah, well, that's an argument. Or more training, the better developing for the teachers themselves. Yeah. Because a lot of these teachers that are teaching, I'm, I'm guessing none of them, are, or I'm just generalizing, they have really, they travelled? Have they, they lived life? What I'm they, saying? They didn't even want to be there. Most people, time. some people just take it because. Getting a teaching degree after you've done a degree at uni, getting a teaching degree, yeah. isn't that fucking hard? Like, like that, so a friend of mine in Turkey, mm. yeah? She left here because she she, did, mm. she did, didn't do a degree in education. Like, her degree was nothing to do with yeah. education or, like, an advanced intellectual sort of thing. Like, oh, I'm, a, I'm learning about science yeah. or physics or whatever. I, I can't, I'll, I'm not going to lie and tell you, I, I can't remember what she yeah. did. I can text her and find out. But she found out that she could get a she could get the qualifications to be to teach English just by doing like a four four week course, six week course or something, mm. which tacked onto her degree. Yep. She did that, then went to Turkey and started teaching English at the Hilton or something. Yep. Rookie. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Man of ours, rookie. He's a teacher. Yeah. Right. But he would have a different perspective because he's travelled. He travels every year. He knows things. Yeah. It's not like he's a dumbass just going to go teach his kids whatever the curriculum, whatever it says yeah. in the book. Apart from that, he can also if someone asks him a question. Oh, this is what it is, or blah, 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 blah. There's not many people like that. Yeah, true. You know, just like if Dim was a teacher, like, he could tell you stories or whatever, you know? Like, <laughs> Do you want me teaching your kids? <laughs> no, no, no. Bro. Listen, uh, mate, just calm down. I know what you're feeling. You need, but, a, you need an eight ball. But you have to understand something. <laughs> The regular twister from KFC is the best hangover cure. <laughs> Believe me I've when I tell you. I've done the science. I've done the maths. <laughs> I've, done the I've done the hard yards for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Put, I put myself through a lot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just understand. <laughs> a couple of other guys from work just went and... <laughs> now, who's got those great pictures of Fev? <laughs> that, was home that was homework. Do a picture Fev. of Fev? <laughs> just taking a specky. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's homework. But I don't go for Carlton. Shut up! <laughs> this is <laughs> Gary Ablett's mark was one of the greatest marks of all time. Recreate it. <laughs> just... I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear any arguments. <laughs> yeah. And the best one gets a twister. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I've been to see him reap. Teachers, man. It's true though, man. You don't need much educational. No, you don't. Like a couple of other guys from work did it, just a couple of years, and then they did a placement, and they're, they're teaching now. They're teaching. That's it. Like I've, I've said it before, I know drop kicks that are teachers. Yeah. And it's like, how the fuck are you teaching kids? Dude, I'm thinking back to some of my teachers, just absolute fuckwits. Maybe we should just become <laughs> teachers. <laughs> <laughs> absolute fuckwits. I was smarter than them in like fucking year 10. Just writes them off. <laughs> absolute fuckwits. You know why? True, because man. they follow a curriculum. Yeah. So they've got to teach whatever the school system tells them to. And they're getting paid shitty, they, they don't want to be there. And they, yeah. Well, to be fair, education. they don't actually get paid that badly. When you're further along, yeah. starting off, yeah, maybe, like it's an average salary. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, they, they're they full-time teachers. Like, they still get holidays, they still get everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? The super and all that. But, yeah. but to have the responsibility of teaching a child, like, you spend as much time with them as their parents, 
You probably spend get, more time. Yeah, if probably more time. You should because when kids go home, they eat, they shit, and then they go to sleep. There should be like a prerequisite of being like. But remember, we said that in the, one of the very first episodes. I said if I had a child going to, t- to like school, I would be fucking filtering out every single teacher that this child would have an interaction with. Yes. So I don't want any fuckwits tampering with my kid's mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck is this guy? How is he teaching my... What are you, you going to teach my kid? Yep. You have no idea what you're doing. Yep. You know what I mean? Finger yep. painting. Mate, I want to see fucking calculations. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then that's the thing. The woman on that debate thing this morning, she was saying something like she had a kid who just started grade five or year seven, mm. like first days of, of school, and she, was, she heard herself becoming that angry, frustrated parent, like yelling at a kid to remember to do, it, do his homework. Mm. To hand in his fucking report that turns or something. Kids off, man. And she's, I don't want to be that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want my kids coming home and I have to fucking get on their backs to do like their homework. Yeah. I'd rather them receive a better education at school where they don't need to come home and be forced to fucking. And that would actually, the kid would actually respond to that. And if anything, and the kid will come home and start researching shit on his own just because. Absolutely. You know? Or, the, but uh, I don't. Am I needs, making sense? Yeah, the kid needs free time, man. You can't just. Pound the kid, and with the wogs, they got like school on Saturdays as well. Yeah. Oh, Greek school, dude! I went to Greek school. Turns but that's what I'm up. saying. Where I fucking that's hated saying. it. That's where kids act up. They would. They would. They don't want to be there, dude. I <clears> fucking <throat> hated Greek school, man. man. I, I had a school it. on a Saturday. Like fuck that, man. All your mates are out, and we're just dying. And I used to. Th- I said it with my luck once. <laughs> okay, Greek school went from nine a.m. to one a.m. It's four hours. That's half a shift. And it used to feel like it was Full the longest day. day in the history of the fucking yeah. universe, man. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you, you hated being there. You're just sitting there listening to dribble. Yeah. It's not even dribble. Like, I always said it, that I would send my child to Greek school to learn Greek because the Greek that you learned at Greek school was like grammar, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like grammar, spelling, history, punctuation. Like, <laughs> actually, it's really weird because at Greek school in those four hours, I actually learned more than I did in regards to, say, the language and the culture and the history than I did at fucking normal school, which I went to for how many years. Yeah. Let's be honest. You're going to send your kids there because your mum made you go there. Oh, yeah, you're so fucking, you're learn, fucking going. Oh, I copped it. Oh, you're you're going to fucking go cop it. Out of the circle of life. And that's yeah. what I'm going to talk to him. Like, Listen here, cunt. You're going to go and you're going to shut up. <laughs> you <laughs> you <laughs> fucking Greek. <laughs> I sound like the biggest bogan in the world. <laughs> <laughs> go learn about Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> going, Damn it, Zeus! <laughs> you're gonna let us do the Zorba. Oh, <laughs> That's all it is. Kids doing the Zorba, eating for subos eight years, for four yeah. hours. <laughs> <laughs> eating subos. Yes, a Yanu Bana logo. The singer comes out. You're a cunt. <laughs> Damn it, like, seriously. I'll be honest, those four hours revolved much more around culture than anything else. Yeah. Like, you had your set, like, okay, I haven't gone to Greek school since, you know, you, fuck. I went to, I went to grade six, and then I, I didn't go in year seven or eight, then I went back for nine and ten, and then I didn't go for eleven or twelve because I was doing it at South Oakley. Yep. We had it as a second language. Yep. Of course we did. So I did finish it. <laughs> I did finish year 12 Greek. But I'm just thinking back to, say, Greek school, even as a kid, like, five years, like, as in grade five, grade four, four hours were split up. You did reading and writing and, um, what's it called, like, uh, grammar and shit like that, right? And, like, just copying phrases, paragraphs out of, like, you'd get homework, which was, like, copy this paragraph, you know, from your textbook. Yeah. Obviously, all in Greek. Yeah. And then you did grammar. And then that the next week, you'd be tested on, like, say, a paragraph. You had to write it with... Sp- Proper spelling, proper grammar, everything. Off the cuff. Yeah. And then we'd have like a history bit. You know, you'd learn about ancient history or some shit. Mm. Well, not even ancient history, but like even near history, like some war or some shit. Yep. <laughs> geography. It's all about war, man. Yeah, we did geography. We'd touch on religion, not really, but you, you yeah. would. Like you'd mention it because religion is a big part of Greek history. Yep. Then, then what? What else did we do? Like, it was all, like, as in it was... Recess. Off, it was <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all, we all did. In a, in a, in a, in a, in Instead of starting with the Australian National Anthem, start off with a... Nethalotekis <laughs> Kilos. Did you go to Yasu Basilis Karas? Utapane. I'm going to Greek school. Yeah, did you go to no. I did, I did it in high school. Okay. Did in high school, but I only did it up to year 10. Yep. And I just couldn't be bothered. I just... <laughs> yeah, but we hated it. Yeah. Like, you know. Jib and all that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, this place, no. 
And the, and, and uh, yeah, no. the, the state of Greek, like, look at this way. Every Greek teacher thought they were your parent. See, that's the problem. Every Greek teacher thought they were your parent so they and they could you. fucking discipline you. Do what they want. Like, yeah. And now parents wouldn't care. It's like, what, what did he do? Hit him again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's seriously. Like, is he acting up? Fucking give him fucking one. Fucking belt him. Like, oh, how do you, fuck. what? So, Holy why? Fuck. Because he's Greek. <laughs> yeah. Like, are the teachers Greek they teachers? Treated, they treated, they, Greek teachers honestly took you on board like they were your, they, you were a child, like they were your parent. Wow. That's how, like, that's how important they have, they felt like they had the right. But you know, that's the other thing. Bear the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> rod made big backhand up. He's <laughs> just, just a left. What? <laughs> Dude, that's actually, that's something else. In other cultures across the world, being a teacher is respected, like, beyond... Japan, dude. Yeah, dude. If you go to Japan, teachers are the, one of the most respected yeah, people. they're a respected trade. Like, you're like a, a doctor or something. Yeah, you yeah. are a scholar. You, you, went to, you went and studied to be a teacher because you want to bring on the next bat generation. So it should be, right? Yeah, but a teacher's respected in Melbourne? No, fuck <laughs> no. Dude, fuck over no. there, because the parents are like, well, these people are molding our children for the future. Yeah. So we have to respect they're like gods, them. man. They're, yeah. they're, they're, Come into the house, take your wife, do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, take your wife. <laughs> Walks in, with yourself. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> the fridge. You know, they, do, do, what you gotta do, man? What's your name? Food? <laughs> when you think about it. Money? Your, Richard Johnson. <laughs> teacher. Richard Dragon. Dude, they, are, <laughs> they really are. They really are as important I'll as... I'll leave a, you guys alone. They're, sorry, they're as important as a doctor, right? Absolutely, dude. Because what? you're fucking moulding young minds. Like Dude, doctors important. save lives. That's a good point. They're not respected yeah. here at no, all. No, doctors save lives. Teachers mold lives, man. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like it's we important. don't respect teachers. Did we, did we respect <laughs> our teachers? <laughs> Fuck. No, you know who we respected? The teachers that didn't treat us like cattle. We respected teachers. <laughs> we, <laughs> teacher. we respected teachers that didn't treat us like That's cattle. Right, like yeah. we were just another number. Like, like, oh, like I hated that bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I threw a chair at it. Nice. Don't I walked into class. Was like fuck you too. <laughs> but but the, we did have a couple of good teachers. We, I, I, can't, I can't say we didn't have like. No, but like you just cracked it about, right? Yeah. The, our, one of our Greek teachers. Yeah. He was a kind of a man yeah. because he treated you like you, you he was your dad. Yeah. Like he'd fucking backhand. And he looked man. like your dad too. Like, he's like he, had a big, he had a mo like big f- Mario flat top haircut. Like he was fucked. Just a cunt. Yeah. Yeah. But he was a good guy because yeah. I, I I said it. I think I've said it before. He was actually honest to me where he'd give me the tip off if teachers were actually had it in for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, such and such has fucking got it in for you. I don't know what you did to him, but be careful because they're all fucking... Just calm yeah. down a little bit. But he was a realist. Yeah. If you fucked around in his class, he used to like throw you into a cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just sat there and listened to what he had to say, he would give you free speech. You could say whatever you wanted. Yeah. He, cared, he cared enough where it was like, all right. Yeah, he wanted you to actually... Pay attention. Like, it wasn't just a matter of, uh, like, five hours after school, fuck yeah. you. It was none of that, man. Yeah. Like, he'd call you a fucking idiot. Like, if we were fucking around, he'd be like, hey! It, t- like, if, Within if, rights. If yeah. us three were sitting <clears throat> together, and one of us was arcing up for whatever reason, not paying attention, yeah. he'd tell me, like, hey, you, hit your friend on the side of their head, tell him to wake up. Slap him. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it was straight up. Yeah. But... Everyone, li- everyone liked him though. Yeah, it wasn't like a. But it wasn't like, oh, what a cunt! I hate him. It was like, uh, like that funny cunt. He's out of his mind. But like, man, you remember when he was in a wheelchair? Yeah, he broke his leg. He broke his leg somehow. <laughs> I can't remember how he broke his leg. But dude, he had us. He had us pushing. Like we were pushing Push him around, around campus. Yeah, he's like, hey, can you? Yeah, come get, on. yeah. And a lot of us were helping, like pushing him around, even without yeah. being asked, because he actually respected us to the point where he cared. And he yeah. always say thank you. Yeah, he'd say thank you. And in return, you respect him to yeah, some degree. Like yeah, he had the hardest cunts in school pushing him around in a fucking wheelchair. Dude, Dude we're talking guys that are on the verge of expulsion, yeah? Yeah. And he had him wrapped around yeah, his feet. Yeah, wrapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrapped, where yeah. if anyone gave him shit, these cunts would jump in. And be like, hey, leave him I alone. I could think like, of about a dozen teachers I would fucking throw down a stairwell if oh, they were in be like, chair. Yeah, totally. That, that, look, 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 that looks like that would have hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. do you know how many teachers we had? I'm still remembering heads. I remember teachers that would hang out in the teachers' lounges, just... Literally chug down like six cartons of smoke yeah. and then come back to class. Oh, he was fucked. Oh, I'd hit that guy, cunt, man. Right? <laughs> that, that, that's One their day. smoker. Dude, he was, pedo, was always, he was always walking around the yards. Always. This Greek teacher, always, every lunchtime, Go you'd see him floating around, just talking shit with students, you know, giving someone shit. I remember on once that you caught someone smoking and he's like, because come on, finish it. Finish it and, and put it out. Because I don't want to have to report you. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. Like he'd give you that chance. It's just, just smoke it. Come on. And that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. He'd never go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell. Blah blah blah. Other teachers, they see you smoking while they're having a cigarette. Yeah. They'd be like, No, I'm telling. I'm telling. Them, <laughs> tell them. Tell <laughs> I'm them. Calling someone. I'm calling. I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting choking while they're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like a power trip. It's a power trip. Think of it like that, man. This guy who went against all the orthodox things and like. 
Know what I mean? Oh, dude. We rolled his car a, down the street. That's the one we stole his car. Yeah, I remember yeah. you telling me like that. We stole Elliot. this guy's car and rolled it down the street. The guy repaid us by, all, by us singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat he in bought us synchronization. And he bought us Maccas for like 30 kids. And he was fantastic. But everyone always, fucking died yeah. for that guy, man. Yeah. We loved him. Dude, we'll take a, we would have taken a bullet for that guy, man. Like, and we, no and we didn't take the piss in his class. No, we no, fucking listen no, to whatever he had to say. We took the piss outside of class. We'd see him like rib him or whatever. But in class, we all listened, man. Because we knew he knew his shit. Yep. And we wouldn't give him shit. We wouldn't give him shit because he's such a good teacher, man. Yeah. Dude, shit, kids, <laughs> kids aren't fucking stupid. Yeah, like nah, nah. you can pick up if someone's a fucking asshole or someone's time. a creep. Big time. You know what I hated? Teacher. Oh, dude, okay. yeah, dude. He, he, was, um, he was a weirdo, man. He, he, he fucking put his hands on my sister. Yeah, yeah. He was a real creepo, man. Yeah, my sister fucking got into a brawl with him, and in the end, dude, actually, that was the funniest thing. Man, like I, wasn't, I wasn't there. I was like doing something else, yeah. And when I've come out, back, the subject. I don't know where I was. Where I was in music. I was in some other class, yeah. And all of a sudden, I remember Ethan, man. They're like all these guys, like and Malaka. <laughs> Touched your sister, man. Your old man's coming. The cards fucked. I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Like I had no idea what happened. And apparently, my sister got into an argument with him over something, right? And he sort of went to approach her, almost like he was going to push her. Like she fucking freaked out. Yeah. Like he cracked the shit. Just don't do that. Yeah. And she <clears> fucking <throat> lost it. And like either pushed him back or did something, right? <laughs> and there were a couple of witnesses. And then all the guys in the class just started so she, losing it. Just they were like, because my sister lost it. Apparently, like I'm going to call my fucking dad. Like it's over. And all the guys were like, because they all know my old man. <laughs> and then I swear to God, they all stopped me outside. Like I'm like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Your old man's going to be shooting himself, man. <laughs> like what happened? So they explained it to me. My old man came down. I didn't see the meeting because I wasn't I wasn't part of it. But, like, because a lot of the guys had witnessed what had happened, they were all in there. And <laughs> they found me at the next break. Like, man, you should have seen that the cunt was white. <laughs> he was white. Because <laughs> the old man had come down because someone had touched his daughter, or allegedly. That's mad. The guy's just like... <laughs> he was a creepo, though, man. I'll never forget. <laughs> Everyone, oh, my God, he's shitting himself. <laughs> the cunt's fucked. <laughs> he was a creepo. He was fucked. I didn't like him at all. He was a... No, nah, he was fucked. But th that's what I'm saying. They just let anyone teach. Yeah. Yeah, they let anyone teach. Dude, like we said in the later, like, like um, older podcasts, like, we used to drop pens and look up girl skirts. Teacher, man. He used to stink like cigarette and alcohol. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> you, you always had booze on his breath, man. Always, always. You should drive that fucking beat up. And that's the thing, man. It's like the principal Dude, we're not naming know, and like, shaming anyone. On that. Like, like, you know what? Yeah. This isn't this isn't fucking hearsay. We're not naming and shaming anyone. No. Like, oh, how dare you, you know, sully my good name. It's like, dude, I was a student of yours for like five fucking years. Yeah. I know what was I know it was under my nose. Yeah. yeah. Like we had you know a couple I mean? of good teachers. Like we had like I'll go yeah, to court like, and testify if yeah. you want me to. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got yeah. about forty other graduating students, those that aren't in prison or dead, yeah. who I'm <laughs> sure will fucking back me up. Yeah, man. Yeah. And that's who yeah. molded you know what? In our year level, you know how many kids have died and the one previous before us? Our that's the teachers class. that yeah, that's and the, teachers, the teachers that, that molded, them, molded yeah. this yeah, generation. There you go. Yeah. But that, that, it's the truth. And you know what, man? I would fucking I'd be fucked. If all the teachers have say, like, okay, let's not include our generation teachers, like people mm. our age that are teaching, because yeah. I've got friends that are teachers, and they're great. Yeah, I wouldn't like, include this. One of my sisters, like, two of my sister's best friends, right, they were, like, my sister's bridal party, yeah, right, that I was part of. Bunch of teachers. <laughs> two, yeah, <laughs> dude, the, the, out of the four of them, <laughs> there was four people, yeah, there was my sister, her maid of honour, and two two bridal bridesmaids after that, yeah, the maid of honour... Studied like journalism, got a degree in journalism or something, right? And the two after that, both have uh, teachers. Yep. Both of them are teachers. <laughs> and they go to like all the film festivals and museums with my sister. All four of them. Yep. Like I, I hang it on my sister all the time and I'll throw her under the bus <laughs> any chance I get. But having said that, my sister is cultured. Yeah. You know what I mean? She does take time out to go to fucking more, more art and more fucking indie films. I always say, well, you got another porn festival. <laughs> 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 yeah. like I'll, I'll speak to like one of her friends. Like, oh, so what have you been up to? He's like, oh, nothing, man. I saw your sister the other day. He went to like a film festival somewhere at some, at like the Nova uh, or the Como or yeah. something. Like well, another German porn festival. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. Just rubbed off his All that. indie art films are German porn. porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Turkish porn. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, having said that, like, our generation's different, but I'm talking, like, our teachers. Ugh. So, like, all our teachers, think about it, right? If we were in high school in 2000 and, let's just pick a year, 97, yeah. right? That would make our teachers that were, say, in their, f how old do you reckon the average age? Mid-40s. There weren't many 50s. that were younger. No, no, our, all our teachers were old, except for...
Yeah, because, dude, I know, like, look, the rookie is 25. Yeah. Yeah, 26. And he's teaching And he's primary. been a teacher for, he's been qualified yeah. for two years now, two or three years. Yeah. No, see, our teachers in high school... How were, old? Were like mid to fi- mid forties to fifties. Yeah, I reckon they'd be in that forty-five to fifty-five year old. So that'd be all. That'd like be the median age. Pushing 70, 80 now. Same for same for me, boys. Well, yeah, all. Yeah, easily because if you're in ninety-seven, twenty years, and they no, were man. fifty in ninety-seven, yeah, they'd be in their seventies now. They'd be retired. Still around? Like she's like eighty. How the hell? But that's what I'm saying, man. This woman. Right, who's Found her on the, Facebook. The one that used to pronounce my name incorrectly and then told me off and kicked me out of class for it because I told her off for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get, get that, right? Fucking, dude, middle America, white Australian, was in, pronouncing my name incorrectly in year seven, and I asked her if she's not going to pronounce it properly or make the time to actually try it. You know she's still teaching. Then stop saying it. Okay, because, okay, you wouldn't, and I mispronounced her name purposely. Okay, you wouldn't like it if I kept saying that and ignored what you were saying, right? Yeah. She kicked me out for it. Yeah. I walked out of class, I'm like, okay, fuck yourself, man. Okay, you, you serious? You're disrespecting yeah. me like that. Yeah. She was out of it then. Yeah. So totally. she'd be in her, like, 70s now, for sure. Dude, easily. Easy. And she was loopy then. Oh, dude. And she was telling me she got sharper with age. <laughs> dude, she was, a, she was a free spirit. Well, there's the problem, man. They're so out of touch with us. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Got a head. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yuck. That's such a teacher head. <laughs> that is such a teacher head. What a head. Dude, no, like, I'm not disrespecting him just based on, like, my experience, but it's just like... You need to have that bond and that connection, like, yeah. on some sort of level. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. How cultured would have been, would half of these fucking teachers been that literally came in, smoked half a fucking deck, and then dude, I'm thinking about all my, I'm thinking about all my teachers, all that age bracket, all not cultured, all assholes. Literally. Assholes, like yep. by nature, man, they're just fucking assholes. They just they didn't care. Bunch of wankers. They favoured it. They favoured it like a few of the kids that didn't knock up. I've learned way more just teaching myself shit, like in my older age, than mm. I ever did fucking. I think it should be, uh, I think it should be like, in a, uh, if you want to go for a teaching position, I think you need to prove the fact that you actually come from some sort of cultured background. I don't mean as in you're not, oh, you have to be, you know, some sort of fucking wog. No, 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 I'm no. I'm saying no. that you have to show that you use initiative to actually seek higher learning on your own accord. Because if a yeah. child asks you a question. You mean, are you part of fucking social groups? Do you attend fucking me like anything are you part dude, of the stone I, cutters I totally agree. <laughs> we do <laughs> we do <laughs> we do <laughs> I totally agree man yeah, does, does that yeah. make sense totally agree yeah, yeah you, you have a fucking membership to some book club you do go to museums frequently or whatever like you've got to prove the fact like we said because kids ask questions and more often than not they look to you for guidance, not their parents. They're not going to ask their parents. And like Dim said, you just know off the bat if they're a cunt or whatever. Like yeah, straight yeah away, you can like, smell it, you man. Can, you just know. You just know. Smell a mile away, mate. <laughs> I, I hated, hated, hated that guy. Like, with a passion. He was fine. I just, I just didn't like People him. like that shouldn't be allowed to teach. Yeah. You're not going to have that no. connection with the kids, no. and the kids but aren't going to want to learn. He was a teacher like for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. At South Oak- but given South Oakley was a really rough school, he would have gone through some shit too. So that maybe made him bitter. As well, yeah, like, I can see the shit like, because like, they it was, should be protected. They were tech before we come when, yeah, and that was fucked up. Like, like they, look, teachers should be protected, absolutely, at all times. Like, I, I fucking hate when parents send their unruly kids to school, they complain that their kids are unruly. Yeah, it's, it's like, like um, dickhead. He learns this in the home, doesn't yeah, learn it from yeah, school. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But more focus should be put on all of that shit, yep. as opposed to just like, man, well, he's fucked. That's fucked. Yeah, whatever. Pay your levies. You know, move on. Yeah. Totally agree, dude. Didn't pay my I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do you hear about the penalty rates thing? Yeah. Sundays are gone, mate. That is one of the biggest fucking <clears throat> schmozzles I've ever seen in my life. Schmozzle, what a word. Schmozzle, nice. It's nice. fucked. Nice. It makes no sense. Yeah. We're going to take our like, penalty rates. Oh, that, that's nice. Like it, Businesses I, are like, fuck yeah. I love how the theory is that if they reduce the penalty rates, right, so basically you're earning the same money you'd earn on Sunday as opposed to, to Tuesday... That means that the business owners can stay, afford to stay open longer, meaning there's more business. All right, so you're working longer hours for less money. You're working longer hours for less money to make the business owner more money. Yeah. But in turn, the people working at those cafes are earning less money. They can't go they're out. They're getting shafted. They're working more hours, so they're going home exhausted, can't be fucked going out, and they've got less money. Yeah. And shafted, man. Straight up shafted. Yeah. That's no lube shafted. Yeah. But Sundays are a money maker, man. Yeah, and the business owners are the ones that are going to... And profit, yeah. During this whole thing when it was on the news, it had the same story was about that CEO from the post office, uh, yeah. Australia what, Post. Five point six million. Five point six yeah. million dollars. He re- he resigned. He and quit. like we're fighting over like 
some Sunday little bit of extra money. But instead of po- 21, like, like someone's getting 24, $24 an hour, but, but we're going to cut that $3 because they don't need it. To be fair, like that post you do didn't get involved in that whole debate. Like it's not his, it's not his issue to fucking. He fight. got dragged into it. It's not his issue to fight because he's just. A, there's yeah. a fucking name the amount of CEOs, dude. Alan Clark, remember Mr. Clark from uh, CUB? CUB, yeah, 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 the brewery. We we're talking about this yeah. when we were away. So what was his salary? Fifty million. Yep. Fifty-two million. I can't remember. Arthur giving us the fact. Dude, there's yeah. an uproar about Gillian McLaughlin. Uh, oh, AFL. Yeah. He earns one point seven, and people are like, oh, too much. Yeah, but Buddy can earn one million. This guy, the, he the guy that fucking controls the whole and he wouldn't sleep. Nest. He would not sleep. He'd nah, be in the man. office every day. He'd be travelling to Perth to go see Fremantle on the West Coast. He'd be travelling. Yeah, he'd be on the go twenty two hours. He'd be sleeping. Like Actually, I'll say hours. this about Trump. I'll give him one thing because I watched a doco up during the election. Your boy Trump. <laughs> Jimmy's starting to bend to Trump by the sound. I'm not of it. bending to Trump. I'm bending. just giving him his due for one thing. His own, Trump's old man was a hard worker. Like why? Why? Why rest? When you can work. Like yeah. Sundays, he'd take the whole family to, to work on construction sites. You know what I mean? Whether it was just picking up nails or yep. whatever. From a kid, Trump l- learned how to hustle for what he wanted from a young age. Yep. And he sleeps like four hours a night because he's just up doing whatever. Whether he's tweeting or whether he's fucking doing whatever, he's up. He sleeps for four hours a night. Then he comes, I need my nine hours. What the fuck is wrong with you? I used to hear that. Dude, I got told once... Ugh. I got told once, like two years ago from someone I was working with, like doing some media shit... Mm. I was, like, averaging four and a half hours sleep. I was fucked. And I said, yeah, don't worry about it. Just fucking blah, 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 and just go to work tomorrow. I need my nine hours. I need to be alert. Said, Dude, you work in a call center. Oh, that shit's me on the wall. You're doing customer that. service on, the, on a phone. How alert do you need to be yeah. when you're just patching fucking... Th- Who do you need to speak to? Oh, yeah, okay. hang on. Beep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll be 495. <laughs> uh, the arrogance but in you the need tone, it. You need I your need nine my hours. nine hours. Go fuck yourself. There are kids in Bangladesh getting three hours sleep, walking 20 k's and sewing 50 know. jumpers yeah. in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Fetching fresh water for their family. I need my nine hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a very demanding job. Like I've said it before, but like 50 cent man, best call he ever made. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he goes, sleep when, I'm when, when do you sleep? I I I'll sleep when I'm dead. S- s- yeah. He goes, sleep. Sleep for, for those week. That are broke. That's right. Like I'll sleep when I'm dead, mate. I, I'm not going to be broke. I've got a chance to do something big. I'm going to fucking take it. And that call and will always stick with me, man. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sleep is for those people who are broke. broke. That's it. You want to sleep? Sleep. Like, they, like, but like don't McGregor. complain about no money, dude. Like McGregor, he f- he f- uh, like flaunts about in his suits and his furs and all that sort of shit. He's allowed, man. But dude, he was broke until his first big fight into like was international. And that's when he won that sixty G's. Yeah, he's like, he won sixty G's, yeah. baby. His missus, yeah. his missus drove him to the airport, and he made a stop at the Centrelink so he can get his last fucking dole check before. Yeah, because he had to check in yeah. to get it because he said to himself, "If I go there and I lose, I'm going to come back with the same money I went over there, but I'll be fucking." 300 quid less because I didn't stop in at Centrelink on yeah, the way there. Yeah. Fuck that. He went there, won, and won like the 60, 60, grand. 60 grand or whatever. Yeah, because he goes, Dana, 60 G's, baby. Yeah. I and then he, came, he came back, and when he came back, he was like, that's it. From now on, we're good. Like, like and what I love, man, better from now about on, his man. missus, he, I saw a doco, and he's like, she stuck by me. She, he goes, I was a bum. He, he, he goes, she was, was supporting him to yeah, fight, yeah, to train, just yeah. train. And he goes, now... She can get whatever she wants. Maybe she doesn't have to work for the rest of her life. Yeah. He goes, I hired her. And he's like, oh, the guy's like, what did you hire her for? He's like, to bank my checks. Like, that's what she does. That's her job, to bank my checks and go spend whatever she wants. Yeah. Because when he was a bum. She was supporting no, him. No equipment, no fucking food, yeah. no rent. She was working to support the boat. Yeah, she was working. She, she believed in him, obviously, as much as you know, he yeah. wanted it. Yeah. yeah. Even when he didn't want it, you know? D. Devlin. <laughs> Devlin, yeah. Devlin. What's that saying? Behind every great man is a great woman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, in that fact, it's true. She supported him through thick and thin, man. Like, she stood right behind him. How, the fuck, how did I get onto that? After we went to Trump, working hard. What was the last thing you said? I feel like I want to rewind it. No, no, before that. I, I was make, trying to make a point. <laughs> 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 no, no, see, oh, penalty rates. Yeah. yeah. Penalty rates, right? That was the start of this. <laughs> according, yeah, yeah, according to them, <clears throat> business owners are now going to be able to open longer, even though there's going to be half the patrons because no one's earning money to yep. fucking go shopping, mm. right? Yeah. At the same time, Arthur brought this up at work and I started laughing. The same people that voted this thing in are the ones that came out and said it's okay for the, the government 
for politicians and MPs to use like 20k to go to the footy. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? It's fine for to use taxpayer money. Yeah, the, we have to go to the footy in corporate boxes because the people want to see us out and they want to ask questions. And of course, it's a taxpayer Old expense. Old starchy cunts. They can take 20k a year to go to the footy on taxpayer money, but they're going to cut the student that relies on Sunday to pay his fucking rent. So mean. Seriously, it's so disgusting, mean. man. Then there was that woman, like, Over on a, a few bucks, like, dude, there was, there was a woman that was on, like, a, a Q&A show, one of those, and she's like, corners. I want to see, she goes, I'm going to, I'm going to be making 600 bucks a week now. I want to see Turnbull survive on $600 a week. No chance. Oh, do it? Dude. She's dude, got, like, three kids, His bottle of wine is probably, like, two, three hundred bucks. Yeah. So, oh, I, I want remember, to see I, these MPs. I remember seeing his smug face on that same, like... Yeah, you know, when they're flashing to him and he's just like walking around with this like smug grin on his face, and I just wanted to fucking just dude. He's a businessman. He's a fucking businessman. Is there oh. illegal accounts in uh, yeah, Cayman Islands? Cayman Islands. Yeah, there's no empathy for the people. It's just business. It's business, right? Fucking can't. And then personal. The judge, business. the judge at the fair trades or whatever that handed this down, he's on like 10k a week. Yeah, but he's arguing over like you know barista's hundred to three hundred dollar paycheck on the big big corporate life, you know. Fucking high rollers, man. So yeah. fucking mean. Marissa's high rollers, there was, man. There was a thing. Hang on a second. Find it. Um, I mean, is that man, dude? Take it. That's taking away someone's like that extra forty it bucks or whatever it is. It just helps them get by. Yeah, like that it helps them get about by. It, that, that forty bucks might go into their vehicle for petrol. Yeah, just to so get to get, work, just so they can get to work. Yeah. But and now maybe, they'll earn forty bucks less, so they've got to take out the forty bucks from, say, the two hundred they would be earning. Out of that, that gives them one sixty. So, in a matter of fact, they've lost eighty yeah. because they've gone backwards. Yeah, they haven't gained; they've lost. Yep. So you got this ridiculous. old starchy judge sitting there. We've yeah. deemed this, this, yeah. and this. And how much money are you earning, cunt? Like, judge cockface. Oh, it's so <laughs> fucking frustrating, man. It's so <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> judge knob. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. It's it, fucking unbelievable. There's a fucking there's um there's a Insta page. It's on Facey as well. Uh, Chris from work got me onto it. It's called Batuta Advocate, and it's just all like sarcastic articles and shit. Mm. Just taking a piss. So they set up like real articles, but just <clears> taking <throat> a piss. And they got this photo. <laughs> this went up uh, just after that penalty race thing went up. Like, see the photo here? This fucking hipster and yep. the barista. And the article says. Penalty rates. Collingwood barista forced to scrap three MDMA caps from weekly budget. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, Wait, what's it called? Uh, Batuta Advocate. B E T double O T A Advocate. You die. Like some of the shit is oh, so yeah. funny. It's like Bryson's part-time job at the Shredded Chalk Coffee Shop has served him well over the last six years as he studies part-time to complete his degree in Aztec folk music. <laughs> but that's all about to change. Aztec folk. <laughs> 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 Oh, this place, this thing's awesome. Yeah, man, you, you'll be all over it. I'm telling you, you guys will love it. You, you seriously need to start reading about it. Oh, this is awesome. Batuta. Get it, get on it, man. But that's it. like, they were saying how, like, that judge is like, these are, uh, these, <laughs> these, Following it, awesome. these baristas, you know, earning fucking $17.50 an hour. Their, their life and the, them lapping up the high life is over with. Now oh, they're going to be forced to work. Yeah, you know what I mean? This guy that earns 10K a week. One million a year, yeah, whatever. Living, they're living so lavishly. Yeah, aren't yeah they? I'm so envious of these fucking baristas. That's got to change because now it's time to sharpen up and join the rat race. Like what the fuck, you fucking idiot! Like you're so envious of the of the barista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's earning these penalty rates. It's a, it's a. And what's a, what's a really fucking like a like, like a massive amount? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just something nuts. ridiculous that no yeah. one needs really. Yeah. It's a, you know, I'm so envious of these cunts. We're what were the touch. three um, trades? It was like hospitality. Hospitality. Retail. retail and uh, manufacturing. No, no, no. Manufacturing. Oh, um, and re then retail is a cunt of a job, like, oh, It's retail not going to affect us. It's not going to affect us. It's going, won't it? Eventually, won't it come to us? They've already, they've, they've chopped hospitality. Why wouldn't like we cop it next? Of course it's going to. No, seriously. Yeah. It starts with one and then it spreads. No, but they get that through, and then okay, now we can do the next one. Now yeah. we can do the next one. Okay, we did that exactly, like yeah. the fucking like the East Link. Yeah, uh, we're only going to have tiles for ten years. Well, we've paid it off. Yeah, just leave them on. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> serious, man. It's true. <laughs> I'll never get over that toll, nah. dude. I'll never. Nah, just keep it going. <laughs> find it ridiculous that we like. I opened up a thing. I had a um like a court. I have to go to court. <laughs> Court summons? Uh, court summons? We should go. We'll be his legal team in Oh, suits. we've got to buy him, buy him the yellow shirt. Yeah, the yellow shirt. And a brown suit. <clears throat> Again, uh, it comes back full circle. But it was for driving on the on the toll road once, right? <laughs> and I just I dismissed the paper. like. And I'm thinking, how mean is this? They're going to send me to court and... <laughs> fight for, for driving on a little bit of road, like... 
10 kilometers. I drove on a strip of road. Now, Again, Johnny, because you do it, then everyone, if you get away with it, then everyone will get away with it. And then the government won't get money, and then it won't go into their purse, and then they can't go to the football. <laughs> Dude, it's he's just, a trauma to delinquent, a menace. <laughs> it just seems. He's a menace! 12 years! <laughs> <laughs> it just seems so mean to me. Do, do like but I'm imagine. driving on a road to go to work. Do you know what yeah. I can imagine? So I can though? pay my taxes. Dude. Yeah. Can you imagine? How fucking mean is that, dude? Can you imagine? So mean. Can you imagine the judge? Can you imagine the judge, like, just looking at the papers and just shaking his head and just going, uh, well, well, Mr. Writer, you have anything to say for yourself? Johnny just shuffles his papers, like, hey, look, judge. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it judge. really unfair and mean. <laughs> just. <laughs> well, well, Jonathan, that's not how the world works, and, you know, you have to pay your debt to society. Well. <laughs> and he starts, he's like, Look, mate. <laughs> That's how you talk to him as well. Like he's your friend. Look, mate. I'm working I look a lot. Buddy, um... I work. I work a lot. I got a missus and a three year old. Like it's really hard. Like you know, I'm doing night shifts. Like he gives a fuck about well, 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 job. Well, well, Johnny, I, I also and have you know family. And he just look at me like, you should have studied in school. Ten years. Done. Bang. <laughs> That's it. The gavel. <laughs> Get out of my court. <laughs> he just gets dragged away <laughs> for a centilink. Cine- <laughs> dragged away screaming. <laughs> I'm eating a sandwich. This guy's playing poker on his phone. Oh, hey, yeah, mate. Uh, uh, we'll keep it going until you get back, yeah? So. How much is your bail? <laughs> Ten grand. We'll see you in a couple of years. <laughs> Cunts. <laughs> <laughs> he dragged out. So mean, so mean. No, 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 but... Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't handle it. This whole penalty rates thing is beyond the joke. Yeah. Dude, okay, think about this. If they cut out penalty rates on Sundays, what would you do? Because yeah, now, because I mean, I rely on my Sunday and Saturday, yeah, because that, that's my bread and butter. I fucking force myself to go to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I start work from, you know, I don't do, I usually generally don't start before four. Dude, four it helps. Eight. Helps big time. That, that's my bread and butter. Yeah. I need Saturday and Sunday. It makes up like 65, 70% of my wage. Now, what would you do if they cut uh, Sunday away from you and you're not earning double time anymore? Knowing that you'd have to work another eight hours just to make up that day. So you'd be working six to seven days a week, not five to six. Well, I'd just have to cop it, wouldn't I? What would you do? Would you keep working there? And a second, you guys are unaffected. Mm. It's only for full-time and part-time. Yeah, yeah, we're not affected yet. Not yet. We're yeah. not... Yeah, but dude, it's clearly on the agenda. Because right now, Turnbull... Has got his all mate, his mason mates, and they've just got like here, yeah, like this table, but it's like a big map of Victoria or Australia. Yes, and it's just there's like the coloured grids of yep. where like all the shitty class workers are. Yep, so totally, it's retail, totally. and they're just totally. swiping away. Yep. <laughs> and and fast food industries, yeah, so it's technology like and stuff. Yeah, just swiping away. Look how much money we've saved. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's so just, disgusting. The time for austerity is now. <laughs> yeah. We need to buckle up. We need to fasten our belts. This is bullshit. They're rotting the system. These baristas and these labourers are rotting the system. Well, it was about right. Dude, these baristas and labourers, they're all fucking, like, immigrants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Unskilled immigrants. I found, I found the numbers. So, like I said last time, the na- national minimum wage is seventeen seventy an hour, right? So, if a fast food worker works on a Sunday... Right, an eight-hour Sunday shift would have earned them two hundred and forty-eight bucks. Yep. So for a kid working at Macca's for two hundred and forty-eight bucks, that's not too bad. Like, if you're a sixteen-year-old or whatever, that drops down to two hundred and twelve. Now, people might say, "Oh, it's only thirty-six bucks." That's a lot of money, man. The people are budgeting down to the very last dollar these days. At thirty-six bucks <clears throat> times twelve for the year, it's a few hundred bucks. You know, that's still it's a few hundred bucks. And that's just for a kid. Like, too bad if you've got a kid or, like, whatever. Like, get it. Pay for, forget, forget it. it. Forget it. Your nappy's gone or your formula for your milk or whatever. Whatever it is. Just oh, wait, for the hang kid. on. I missed that. 36 by 12. What does that mean? Uh, okay. Sorry. So, I- on a Sunday shift, yeah. if you're getting the minimum wage in Australia, which is 1770, on an eight-hour Sunday shift, you'll make 248 bucks. 248 bucks? Yeah. 248 bucks. And but uh, on this scheme now, as in with the whole cuts, yeah. the person will earn 212. Okay. So, 212. That's 72 a fortnight. That's 144 it's $848 a month. $848 a yeah. month. Yeah. That, that just bleh, gone. Yeah, gone. And when people budget down to the last dollar, which people are made to do these days. Dude. Yeah, you, I remember, you have to, you're forced to redo the budget and yeah. then have nothing. I remember nothing. my ex. Yeah. I remember an ex of mine like 10 years ago or something. She'd said um, she worked in retail, uh, like at Southland or something. Yeah. And I can't, remember if she, I can't remember if she said it was someone that came into where she worked or she was at the supermarket, but someone was losing it because um, the Woolies or Coles had changed the price or something. It was, you know when they fuck up with the advertising yeah, and yeah. it's always like 10 cents off or yeah. some shit? They'd done that 
and an item was, you know, like 50 cents instead of 30 cents. Yeah. And the woman was losing it, like, fucking blah, 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 how can that be, this, is and that. And she goes, what's she making the big stink of? It's only like 10 cents. I go, yeah, but if she's budgeted down to the last fucking dollar... Makes a big difference. Yeah, that it extra means 20 get that cents item. means she can't get that or it's going to chew into something else. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And okay. It's a chain reaction. And if her husband just handed her like a 50 and said, here, take make that... It, make it work. Make it work. Yeah. Come back with change because we need it for the fucking <clears> bus tickets for the kids. Well, you're fucked. And she, yeah. when I said that, she's like, yeah, true, you're right. You know, yeah, like, absolutely, yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what some people don't understand. Like, and you know what? A majority of Australia do budget like that. It's Dude, not... I, I budget like that. I yeah. earn a good fucking wage, but because of my living circumstances, which are unavoidable, mm. I budget down to... Like, I'm, thank God. Thank God I... I so ice the, on the side. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank God that crop. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, thank God I did produ- I've done production and producing yeah. shit because you're forced to deal with money on the fly, cheap options, yeah. budget ahead. I've survived by the skin of my teeth. I've, I've maxed out credit cards every week just to stay alive, but I haven't gone to anyone for help. Like I'm not, I'm not a burden no, no, on anyone no, yet. No. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Yet, <laughs> yeah, I'll say it. Yet, I'm not. I'm surviving by the skin of my fucking teeth, yeah. man. But you're surviving. But that's because I literally can project budgeting, and I know what to go without and what I need yeah. to double down on. It's just the way it goes. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, my mum's birthday's this week. I'm thinking, fuck, I've got to put in for that gift. I've got to do that. How much money am I got coming in? All right, I've got to pay that. I've got to pay my rates. I've got to do this. So okay. you write it all down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I can just say, all right, cool. I can see big numbers, yeah. big glaring numbers, and it's like. All right, well, I normally put aside this much for bills. I'll put aside that much less so I can cover this. Mm. I think on my feet. Dude, there are people that can't think on their feet that quickly. Mm. And with these carts, it's like just another burden. Like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose an extra 40 bucks. Great. There's $180 out of my pay every week. Now what? (laughs) But that's what I was saying, dude. If we lost our Sunday rates and our weekend rates, and that means I'm going to have to work at least... Yeah, another 15, 16 <clears throat> hours. You have to pick up an extra two shit. Why the fuck would I sit there and tolerate the job that I tolerate now? Yeah. I tolerate it for the, for the sole purpose of earning that extra money on the weekend. So you can get by. Dude, I'll go and do a nine to seven. It's anywhere else if I'm going to earn the same fucking money as I would doing a four, six a.m. Something a bit cushier. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to earn the same money, yeah. I'll be looking at this ticket. Because like, I say it about our job all the time. When people are like, oh... Because, dude, I rarely tell people what I actually earn. I tell you guys because you work with me. And, and plus, you know, I know. Yeah, I know. you already know. Yeah, like, yeah. I've known you how many years. Yeah. I rarely give anyone the opportunity to fucking say to me, well, what are you complaining about for then? It's like, why? Because I don't have any fucking job security because I'm up at the crack of dawn in a fucking, like, in refrigeration. Yeah, because you can walk in and be like, yeah, we don't need you anymore. Yeah, tomorrow, if they just decide, you know what? Pfft, yeah. Bang, gone. Gone. We, we're cutting 20 people off just for in, fun. The, in the area and you are for unfortunately funsies. one of them. For fucking funsies. Yeah. I've been there seven years. doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean shit. I said it to someone the other day, man. They gave me a compliment because I'd done something well at work. Like, my name had come up in one of the meetings with all the team leaders and shit. And, like, I'm not rubbishing our team leaders. But, I, like, they'd said to me, oh, your name got mentioned, you know. It's a, I said, and I was half asleep, like, when they were telling me. I'm like, huh? I'm like, that, it's, you know, congratulations. It's a good thing, mate. You know, it's a pound the back. I said, wow, okay, one in seven years, that's not bad. <laughs> okay, let me know when you've got something else to tell me. You know what I mean? And I walked off. I was in, they knew what I was saying because it's like... Okay, well done. I'm How about still, giving me a bonus like I'm still money. expendable. I could, I could literally come back from Smoker and you'd be like, yeah, you don't, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just literally, man. Yeah, it's come down from the top that we're cutting people. Sorry, see ya. Go fuck yourself. Goodbye. Not needed. And like you, Johnny, what happens then? With a kid and... Uh, you know, how hard would it be for you? Start selling ice again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. actually, actually, your shipment's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Container, we're Sweet. in South Melbourne. I'm running low, good. <laughs> the, the spirit of Tasmania is just it, coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> good to know. I was going to say, did you see the thing in the news about um, the planets? They discovered seven planets. They. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seven yeah, planets that. in the habitable zone. They called it the Goldilocks zone. <sighs> like, it's, yeah. it's not that ridiculously far. Look it up. Seven planets, not that ridiculously far, where it's like oh, gazillions of years away. It would take like a couple of years to get there or something by... As opposed to 20 light years. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, up to George Jetson. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seven Earth-sized planets found. Orbiting. Was that the damn thing? Get a conveyor treadmill. <laughs> I love that show. Yeah. The Jetson. A huddle yeah. of seven worlds, all close, close in size to Earth and perhaps warm water, and that life it can sustain. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Aliens are getting closer. Faint star mm. in the constellation of Aquarius. 
Huh? This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. 40-year-old <laughs> <40 year old> virgin. <laughs> I just see the Simpsons, you know, with the uh, planetarium. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This picture isn't you. Jump, That's the old sparkle. <laughs> 39 light years away. How many? 39. It's only 39 light years away. 39 light years. Only 39. That's yeah, right. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> means we need to um, figure out light speed travel real quick. Yeah, but... but it's feasible. I don't know it's feasible. what that means. It's feasible. You reckon... Okay, this is what I don't understand when people think... When they talk about life on other planets, they're only looking for life in the human form that we know. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it, couldn't it, isn't there a possibility that there's life that exists without the use of oxygen? Of course there is. No, I'm just, uh, I reckon there is. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, just putting it out there that we are not all in God's fucking image... Yeah. And we're not all just men like this. Like You know what I mean? Like, we're not all just humans with, like, our breathing. Yeah, maybe there's something else that doesn't need to breathe off. Something, d- like, fish have gills. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If the fish have gills, and clearly something can be created. Yeah. Like, jellyfish are invulnerable to yeah. everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good Why point. are we looking for oxygen-safe planets when life could exist in its own That's all we yeah. know. That's what I'm saying. Because we are... How fucking dumb are people? We are insignificant speck yeah. on this universe. On we the are. spectrum, we are fucking nothing. We are, one, we are one small planet, and we are specks on yeah the a gr- little green dot. Yeah, yeah. With, Gumby. with our makeup, <laughs> as Gumby. intricate as intricate as our makeup is, yeah. we are a fucking speck, a yeah. granule yeah. in the sea of solar systems. Yeah. And we're, but we're wasting time looking for and we're sitting here doing planets because oh, that's yeah. what we're going to find life. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, it's warm enough to have water. Like, who cares? Yeah, what, what? <laughs> mate, come down to Dufton or fucking Sandown. Plenty of bums not drinking water to survive, man. Yeah. This is <laughs> guzzling out of boxes of goon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there could be shit way beyond our understanding or, or anything. Yeah. Like, can, yeah. Can, you imagine, can you imagine them freaking out if they land a, something, a rover on some fucking moon and there's something totally different we've never ever seen before? And they can breathe better. Yeah. They can it's function they, without dude, oxygen. They could be fucking invisible invisible beings, like, you know, transcending through time and space, just at the, like the Matrix. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just but we're, we've got the arrogance to think we're going to fucking befriend it and we're going to be superior. And it's going to be gonna like gonna us. Even understand mm. it. No, we're going to yeah. send the US Army. Dude, there could be fucking <laughs> extra to <laughs> invade. Yeah, that's what we do. We're going to send the US yeah. Army to invade. There could be extraterrestrial life floating around us right now. We would not fucking know. Yeah, man. They could be just looking at us like, look at these dumb fucks. Look at these idiots. Yeah, these just... meatbags. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh, downloading, uh, downloading our podcast on SoundCloud and uh, iTunes. Oh, yeah, on YouTube now as well. And, and now on YouTube. <laughs> Bobby's been busy. He's uploading on YouTube. <laughs> that's a nice little plug. Just like, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm just saying, for the, for the point of argument, who cares? Yeah. Like, we found them in the gold at white because they share similar traits to our planet. Big deal! There's millions deal. and millions of planets out there. there. There has to be. Like It's it's like, literally, if you go to the beach and you scoop up a handful of sand, every fucking grain of sand represents a solar system in the galaxy yeah. that could sustain life. Yeah. How many grains of sand are in a handful of sand, man? Dude, <laughs> millions, billions. Millions? Like, Sco- trillions. You can't even count it. Let's count them one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's Johnny's, that's Johnny's mission in life. The, 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 every let's, granule. Let's count the granules of sand in a fist of sand. <laughs> Did you, why? Do, just so we know. I'll Google it because no one's actually done it. Let me check. I'm serious. I'm not even joking. Clearly, someone probably someone had to have done it somewhere. Have you seen sand under a microscope? It's so amazing. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, dude, there's like all these weird little shapes and. You know what we should do? <clears throat> we should set up like a like a science works, but like a cool science works. Mm. You know what I mean? Just stupid information, like how many grains of sand in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how to make mushrooms, uh, how to make portobello grilled mushrooms with feta. <laughs> Life skills, you know what I mean? How many, Trollman? So they said if you amass a he grain of sand... He Googled it! A stats man, man. <laughs> and he's got his white coat on now. <laughs> his hair's parted. What the hell? He had a bus come and walked in. He's got like this part. Where do you get that laser pointer? <laughs> <laughs> they said if you assume a grain of sand right, has an average size and you calculate how many grains are in a teaspoon, then multiply by all the beaches and deserts in the world, the earth has roughly, and we're speaking very roughly here, 7 by 5, sorry, 7.5 by 10... 18 squared grains grains of sand, or seven quintillion quin, which comes around to 500 quadrillion grains. So in your hand must be like just I couldn't couldn't even like. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My summary is that's a lot. That, that's a lot. 
Oh, here we go. How many? Okay. And you expect people to get their heads around the probability of life. Let's no. Make it, yeah. There's no life out there because the Bible says there's no life out there. Let's make it, let's dwindle did it down a bit. The fucking Bible, the cuts that wrote the Bible, did they have the theory of grains of sand versus solar systems with habitable life? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's, let's, Seriously, man. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's simplify this a bit. Talking about burning bushes and shit. <laughs> so let's say 50, 50 cubic centimetres of... <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> oh. All right, let's. <laughs> right, go, go, go with the facts. Uh, yeah, sorry. Then, um, 50 cubic centimeters. All right, let's say in a cup. Okay, just one cup. Okay, just simplify it. In a small cup, there should be around 400,000 grains of sand. And the cup, we could fit probably more in our hand. Oh, roughly about the same. So 400,000. How long will that take you to count, man? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then consider the fact that that may represent a fraction of the soul of the galaxy, <laughs> if. which is growing. The galaxy is infinite, and then they said they found evidence that it isn't infinite. But yeah, whatever. Even just separating the grains of sand would be hard. Like you'd need a microscope. We have trouble separating tw- lentils for our soup. Yeah. Oh, dude, just roll around in it, man. Then try and have a shower, and then see how many grains of sand come up. <laughs> you ever siphon? Because it's sand. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's my crack. No, you need a microscope and some really Absolutely. pointy nosed tweezers because, like, some bits would be so small. Dude, like. you can separate them with like a, a string, a bit of string. Yeah, but and just string. raking it through yeah, yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life's yeah. mission. <laughs> but that's you what I'm saying, cr- man. Yeah. If that's what the soul, if that's rep- that's an accurate representation of the the galaxy, solar systems within the galaxy. And, you know, the universe and all that sort of shit, like the Milky Way and all that crap. And it's enough to make you go crazy. Habitable planets. And, yeah. And the probability of life. No, because the Bible said we're the only ones. Unless we are trapped in a snow globe and NASA is just a whole big fucking scheme. <laughs> Unless. That's the other option. Well, you never know. That's a that's well, the whole. Well, um, that's a whole fascination. That's a, that's, with, well, that's conspiracy theory one hundred and one right there. Yeah, exactly. Conspiracy theory one hundred and one. That's yeah. that's the fascination yeah. of it because yeah. people think outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with that. Like you can go nuts, but there's a lot of people that go nuts. But they're just. Autom- <laughs> but I've they, been there. <laughs> but they're just automating everything. You know how you said how you just watch like shit from a grid like above and you just see everyone like robots doing like, the same like thing. Like robots, yeah. Dude, like Shane. Everything's like that because like kids in schools aren't fucking reading and writing. They just mm. got. <laughs> like uh, iPod, uh, iPads now and all that sort of shit. Everyone's mm. fixated on their phones for whatever reason. Mm. And you yeah. go to work and everything's autonomous now. Like, you, you know, thinking outside the box is, is a rarity. And everything's getting uniformed. doesn't matter what field you're in. Everything now is being uniformed by budgets and KPIs. Like, this is what we want you to hit. This is what how much we have to spend. This is how much you're not going to spend anymore. This is what you're making. And if you don't meet it, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> It's what? just like, that's your grid mentality. You ignore, so ridiculous to me. you ignore every other factor that makes whatever role or job or whatever you have mm. interesting yeah. or, you know, relevant, because yeah. now it's just driven by KPIs and budgets, because it's yep. like, okay, well, I need to make money. The budget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the budget, yeah. Full circle from nine months ago. Yeah. Yep. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what your role is. Like, I went into work and they said You to could me, be scooping shit. Dude, <laughs> three, four weeks okay. ago, <laughs> three, four weeks ago, I got oh, a call from, um, I got a call from our employer, like, as in the yeah. casual labourer. I don't know if I told you. I think I told Johnny. Got a call from the employer and they said, uh, your performance has come under review, like, it's popped up. It's, it's dipped. But we realise it's because you don't scan on and off between jobs, so your, your clock is constantly running, and it's it, the system believes you're not doing anything. Whereas, I yeah. wonder if you people at work, man, where I've been given autonomy to just fucking do whatever job I'm doing, and they know I'm doing it because they actually trust me because I'm not a fuckwit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm joking. I had this conversation <laughs> with them on the phone, <laughs> but I made a point. I made a point. I hate you. I, I said to the, I said to the, um, I said the same thing to the employer as I went into work, found one of our TCs. And I said, listen, you got 20 minutes to talk. He's like, yeah, yeah. After I finished my shift, I went into his office, and I had fucking all the two team leaders mm. in there, two managers. And what's up? I go, listen, I got a call from, my emplo- uh, from our employer about my performance on paper. And I'm like, okay. But they said it's because of A, B, and C. Mm. Okay. So what, what are you saying? I go, well, listen, I, I'm telling you what I told them. If you want me to improve my performance on paper... That's going to cut my actual productivity down. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. I don't, and they go, and they go. Well, we don't want you to do that. I go. I don't want to do that because that's not how I work. I don't come into a job thinking I'm going to do as least yeah. as I can. Yeah. Okay, that's not in me, mate. Okay, yeah. and I'm sorry, but 
I'm not going to cut my my productivity down just to get my performance up on paper when I know that I'm dude, actually doing less work. Dude, I feel exactly the same. Yeah. Way. If I'm told to change jobs, I don't want to take five minutes to go and then fucking scan out or off yeah for another job. Shit. I just rather get onto it straight away. That's what I do. Oh, yeah, fuck. and and that's what they said. They go, look, how many times has your performance come up in the last twelve months? I go, oh, mm. once. I go, well, there you go. Don't worry about it. You know, I go, we know what you're doing here. So then why get called up? Because it goes back. In, I brought the same thing up. A month earlier, when they raised it in the team meeting, and I made the point, and our team Tool, leader just toolbox like, meeting. Team team leader just fucking like looked at the ground and is like, "Oh, this kind again." Like he opened his mouth because I, I made a valid point, and he's like, "Look, mate, just do what you know we suggest and work from there." And the same thing happened, man. Like my performance dropped on paper, but my actual productivity is up. So you know, what do you do? And he said, "Oh, you know, look, the numbers come from above, and we don't want to be having this talk every fucking month. You know, when it comes up, it just gets." It goes at all the managers and managers above and CEOs. They just see the numbers and they don't care. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but there's the fucking problem. There's the problem. Yeah? You know? Yeah, man. We got fuck with taking, cutting uh, corners, taking shortcuts, creating dangerous work environments, all that sort of shit, yep. affecting everyone's productivity. But on paper, they're like the superstar of the fucking warehouse. You know what I mean? Yeah. How does that work? It's so frustrating. But that's what I'm saying. So KPIs, all that sort of shit has just taken away from anything organic where people are forced to fucking use their logic... Dude. To deal with the situation, to totally. bend, go around the rules just to fucking do something to get something done better. Mm. Yep. I oh, know we can't do that. <laughs> it all you know comes I mean? back to the paper and the fucking. Oh, but yeah. You know what it's like? It's oh, like so frustrating. It's like the, the GP right now, yeah? That's a union site. You need your red ticket and all that shit to be out there. You have to sign up to the union. Oh, the you know, Grand Prix. Yeah, do you know what the funny part is? Because when I used to work events, we did all the flooring for and concrete weights and a couple barriers and shit. And they forced you to join a union in order to work out there, all right? To join a union, you had to pay like 200 bucks, and it got you an extra like a dollar or something per hour, and one of our managers at the time was like, so you want me to join a union, earn it, pay 200 bucks, then earn an extra dollar an hour, so I've got to work 200 hours just to get my fucking money back. Yeah. The Grand Prix will be over. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You'd have to work like two years worth of fucking Grand Prix to, just get, to, get, back. Just to get the union mm. fee back. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it like this, yeah? If a forklift fucking collapses... On some, like, like someone falls off a forklift, gets trapped underneath it, and the fork's parked on top of him. <laughs> That's right? horrible. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah. yeah. Then the only person around to, to do anything about it is a guy without a fork license who hasn't been signed off to the site. Yeah. If he was to jump on that fork to move it, there'll be an investigation as to who moved the fucking forklift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yep. Is he registered? Is he registered? No. Oh wow. Well, yeah. There'll be a fucking meeting about that. Yeah. It's like I saved the man's life. Doesn't matter. Like, look at it fucking... Like the shooting in... Uh, like the, the fucking lunatic, the, the Burke Street Mall dude. Yeah. Same thing there, man. Yeah. Though we have to consider oh issues. And it's like, dude, the two dudes that ran out like, to come with batons, they didn't fucking consider oh and issues. And <sighs> they thought about how we're going to stop this fucking lunatic. Fucking deal it. Before, yeah. Deal with it before people fucking die, but you that's idiot. what I'm saying. We're just getting too fucking robotic. Yeah, totally. I, dude, you know? I so totally fucking agree. Autobots, man. Yeah, man. Autobots. <laughs> Autobots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, how long have we done? I'm getting hungry. Uh, two hours and 36 minutes. Nice. <laughs> you know, Ken said that to me the other day. I asked him, what time is it? He's like, one o'clock on the rocket clock. Ah. <laughs> I, died. I hadn't heard that in like five years. <laughs> hickory man. dickory dock. Yeah, on the hickory dickory. <laughs> <laughs> one o'clock on the hickory dickory, man. Uh, before we move on, I've been meaning to give a shout out for like fucking yes. three weeks. I keep forgetting. Shout out to my mate Pandalu. Yeah, this kid, <laughs> Pandalu. Oh, this guy looks really fucking... Like who? <laughs> Kids named Tony from Clayton. Pandy Lou. Pandalu. <laughs> Pandalu is a show in Cyprus. It's based around like a really village spec mm. sort of. Um, Thanks for talking to me like a baby just then, Trollman. Sorry. No, no. It's, awesome. it's, it's really village, <laughs> man, village, village, village spec, like really fucking grassroots, man. Where the point where even the Cypriots like try and listen to the dialect and they don't understand it. Like it's full Cypriot. Yeah. Apple Jamaic Latis. Yeah, but when I, when I was there, I was purposely watching the show because it actually made my ear more. Um, Susceptible to like taking in Cypriot so I could actually understand better. I don't feel uh... and we're, we're there one, like one day when we were over there, he was one of the boys that flew over there. He lives on and off like in Cyprus. And while we we're there, he started imitating the main character, Pandalu, and I died. I'd never heard anything that funny. So from that day, I started calling him that. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, but he's one of our listeners. He's a, he's a fucking silent listener, man. Like I'd called him up 
a week or two ago, whatever. Oh, the old silent Yeah, listener. and then he brought something up about the podcast. I'm like, when do you listen to the podcast? He goes, mate, uh, I'm up to date. <laughs> How he many goes, people would be like that? Yeah, he goes, give me a shout out. I go, all right, I will. And then I spoke to him a week ago. He's like, you giving me a shout out yet? Because I'm still catching up, but I haven't heard it. I go, oh, nah. I go, I, I yeah, forgot it or whatever. So I'm giving him a shout out. He's actually going back to Cyprus soon, so I've got to try and catch up with him for Pandalu, you. did I say it right? Pandalu. <laughs> Pandalu, we love you. Pandalu, we love your ears. Yeah, no, he's. You know what, man? That kid, I'll give him his due. <clears throat> he, when I was there in Cyprus, I was there a couple a week before my birthday, my twenty fifth. Fifteen minutes before I turned twenty five, we we're in the hotel lobby that he had a stain at, and I was on my laptop and I was just making like a track. It's like a real housey sort of track. Yeah, and he just looked up. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I go, I just started this, this tune. It's like a real ben- Benny Benassi sort of electro sort of track. He's like, fuck, that sounds mad. He's like, you just do it now. I go, yeah, man, just don't laugh me. And he lost his shit. The following morning, he, we broke into the aerobics gym area of the hotel because it was empty. It was the middle of winter, so no one was using it. Broke into the gym aerobics room, like all mirrors and shit because there was a sound system, like a big PA system. Plugged it in and you just heard my tune like belting out through That's this mad. whole fucking hotel. That's mad. Yeah. Sick. I'll give him that. Like, he's been a big supporter of my shit. Like he's always pushing me to keep doing music and all that sort of stuff. Like off the bat. And I haven't known him that long. I've known him, yeah, eight years maybe, as opposed to, you know, mates I've known for like. Yep. Yeah. No, good kid. <laughs> any, any friend of Jim is a friend of mine. <laughs> no, he's a good no, he's a Looking good for kid. free food. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's another barbecue I can go to. <laughs> no, he's a good kid. <laughs> he's a good kid. <laughs> Just sourcing out the halloumi this yeah. time. <laughs> hey, you didn't have any halloumi at your barbecue. I was quite pissed off about that. I'm not super. It. <laughs> it's, 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 I was quite, I was quite pissed off about that. You could just go buy some yourself and bring it. Yeah, but a bit of halloumi would have just spiced it up a bit. Nah. I know you like halloumi. I do like halloumi, but not like chops, sausages, oh, Greek okay. salad, the dicky, just a bit of bread. I don't know. I don't know. Greek. I like, like halloumi more. Like if I'm gonna do you know it like for dinner at home, if I'm cooking just at like. Yeah, at a barbie, Greeks wouldn't serve halloumi. No, we don't serve saganaki at a Greek barbie. Not at a barbie. No. You know, actually, you know what, man? They serve it in taverns and restaurants as an entree. But we don't have it at home. But like, as in, yeah, at home you wouldn't. Not for a barbecue at all. I don't. Yeah, oh, man. Shit. Oh, I okay, use halloumi cool. and, and shit like that at home if I'm making breakfast or whatever. I usually put halloumi and stuff in a salad. Like yeah, I cut it up. A salad. Oh. Yeah, you use it in a salad or you use it at breakfast. You know, just as a side sort of thing. Some cheese, yeah. But you really wouldn't do it at home. Not for a barbie. It's just the it's western um western tastes. Yeah. You know, they just bastardize yeah. all the all yeah. the meals. Like saganaki, if you go to Greek tavern, they'll fry some up for you or halloumi or whatever as an entree. Yeah. An entree, but you wouldn't do it at home. Mm, I don't know why. That's actually strange. Yeah. Good point, you know what, Do you know what I do when I get halloumi? I just, oh my god! I, cl- I chop up the whole block like into pieces. I fry it up, mound it up on a plate, put lemon juice all over it's it, best. and sit there and eat it. Yeah, that's it, man. It's just the best. Sit there and eat it by itself. That's how much I fucking love halloumi cheese. Dude, halloumi and is like the best. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah, halloumi is the best. The halloumi's oh. got that saltiness to it. I love yeah. that. Oh. Halloumi is just a bit more. And you wash it down with like a beer. Proper proper halloumi, man. Like I buy from the markets. Proper halloumi has got a sweetness to it. Yeah, I get the proper Sometimes stuff. Sometimes they run like honey and shit through. I get the proper well. stuff from the, the supermarket. You bro. know what? You Don't love the <laughs> you love the Turkish place around the corner. The one I told you about. They put orange on it and the orange oh, honey. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me about orange that. honey with the sesame seeds and it's like caramelized with the dude. Oh my god. Death, man. <laughs> Straight death. Death. Straight death. death. Straight death, man. Dude, I'll eat the whole block. I swear to God, you will, <laughs> you will leave your missus, everything, and you'll start working at this little Turkish place just to eat that. That's his payment. I'm not even joking. I'm, Forget I'm penalty close, rates. This guy's just getting anyway. a, wheel, a wheel of halloumi as his payment every week. <laughs> that would seem And they keep him... You have, like, 15 minutes access to the grill plate every day so you can fry it yeah. up. As much halloumi <laughs> as he can. <laughs> that would seem for weeks. He comes out all gorged because he's been eating cheese. Just sweat dripping out of just my pores. Just the wheel of cheese. <laughs> cheese coming out of my pores, like sweat. All right, dude, um, let's wrap it. It's, it's 2 hours and 40. Good party, yeah, boys. It's only 20 to hey, 20 was 20 there 20 anyone 20. else you had to shout out apart from... I don't Pundu? have anyone. Because you? Oh, you said... Pundalu is a two that you said? No, that's it. Pundalu. Oh, I thought you said two. All right, anyway. Cool. Uh, maybe I did and I forgot it. Like, I don't know. Check <laughs> Apologize to that person. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Probably I, I had to please shout out. But yeah. Hey, hey big thank you to everyone. It's Lizzie. I, who's sharing? I want to know who's the culprit that's sharing. Who's yeah. yeah. Our numbers have like, uh, taken a bit of a kink. Yeah, the we're last... getting some good numbers. Yeah, yeah. it's really, really. Sh- and we want to thank everyone. Like, but what was it called? Boynton again. Boynton, Virginia. Boynton, Virginia. <laughs> Boynton, Virginia. Hey, I've actually looked it up. I actually, like, I saw some real estate stuff yeah, there. Yeah, got some nice exactly. properties. You know you can buy a two-acre yeah, property there. Yeah, you're saying. Now, one acre for nine, yeah. right? Or you can buy a two-acre next to the river so you can fish and stuff with your own boat thing, yeah. PR, for like 80 grand. Can Australians just buy property in the States? Because I know, like, some countries you're not allowed to. 
sure you can do something. Mate, I'll sit out there with my shoes off, playing my banjo on the river. <laughs> Deliverance? Eating some American <laughs> pie. Dude, that is life, man. I'm telling Hang you. Hang on, wait a second. No, no, no. I'm, I was going to ask you this before when you were looking up real estate. Because you know how like they're cracking out how the Chinese yeah. and the Russian invent- investors are buying we're up. We're Westerners. Yeah, buying up shit. Do you reckon... Can Australia... Um, um, honest question. To get a green card in America, it's ridiculous. Like you unless gotta, you win the lottery, the green you, card you got to jump through hoops like it's a motherfucker. Yeah. Unless you marry a local and even then prove. But I think we have better chance being Australian. Can and uh, Google it. Is it going to be harder now with Trump in power? Or yeah, it is. it is. For sure, yeah. He's already thrown out all the immigrants. Like, is forget it. Are going to be soft to the Aussies maybe a little? No. Dude's making it harder for us to go over there. Yeah, he's, he wouldn't be soft on the Aussies. He's just he's wiped his yeah, hands. I don't know. That's a lot. He's yeah. wiped his hands of all the trade agreements we had. We had all these, we had all Donnie. these, um, Donnie, come on, Donnie. dude, we had all these asylum seekers lined up. We, Barack had agreed to take on, you know, 10,000 or 20, however many, yeah. you know, from like Manu and all that, like we're passing them over there. And Trump just came out and said, why are we taking on so many uh, refugees? It's ridiculous. And just wiped his hands of dude, it. Dude, do you think he really could be against the globalist agenda? Because he doesn't want to give humanitarian aid? No, no, but not just that. Like he's just like shutting America off to like fucking so much of the world. He's not shutting America off. Like he with just, trade agreements and He like, has this arrogant belief that America doesn't need anyone else. Like, his thing... Do you know what he's doing? His, tra- his, his thing is like, fuck China, we don't need China to, to trade. That's what I'm saying, like right? anti-globalist. Yeah, but do you know why he's saying that? Because he believes that by doing that, he'll create more jobs in, in America. In America, yeah. Yeah, but dude... Americans don't want to piece together iPads for three cents an hour. No, they don't. That's what he doesn't understand. He thinks that just by ch- closing off agreements with China, we just bring back jobs back to American sites. Like, that doesn't work like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, trade, countries are reliant on fucking trade because there are things we do in Australia better than fucking things that, you know, say Japanese do. Japanese are... Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, man. He's so patriotic. Americans like us, we're the only ones. Yeah. Like, like, he's not globalist. Like... No, he's only globalist when it's in America's fucking favour. Yeah. That's why he's not shutting out certain countries in the Middle East, you know, like the way he shut out all the other ones because they're from hotbeds of terrorism, even though the countries he picked... Had nothing to do with terrorism. Had nothing to do with terrorism. Yeah, but I mean, the true globalist agenda would be to just open up more and more and just have this one no, world government sort of what thing. what he's doing like is he's, cherry, he's cherry-picking just to try and put America in the best vantage position, position over everyone else. That's the point. Globalism, globalist isn't necessarily a bad thing, man. It means free trade. It means everyone can communicate with everyone. It's open borders. It's free speech. It's, it's open f- communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump isn't doing that. He's like, fuck them, fuck them. We don't need them. We need all the money. We need all the guns. We need all everything. Fuck everyone. It's your fault. It's your fault. He's blaming everyone but himself. He's fully against the media as well, big time, yeah, right? Yeah, because they're painting it. <clears throat> he's against the media because they're painting a shitty picture of him because, and he's reporting fake news and alternative news. Anything that goes against Trump is fake. It's just such a such a one eighty on like the way that it's been run normally. Like yeah, because we we're pushing towards like a global community. Now he's creating imperialism again. Yeah, it's imperialism, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, is he really like not a part of fucking the whole? No, because like I said, he's that arrogant where he thinks America doesn't fucking need anyone else. It's like you're an idiot. America isn't just made up of Americans. We're, no. we're, we're global. Mm. Yeah, you know, he hasn't got George Washington in the in in you know DC anymore, and it's just you know the the true fucking Republicans and the true fucking independent. Like you're an idiot. Like the, the, America isn't just made up like that anymore, man. It's it's not it's, it's the world. It's fucking we are a world. We're a global community now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's why I can fucking contact that Hassan in Pakistan to do my graphics work because it's free. Yeah. It's open trade, open communication. He didn't just, you know, he hasn't got a list, oh, your IP's from Australia. We don't talk to Australians. That's what he's doing. That's what Trump's doing. That's what, that's what he's doing. He's shutting the borders. Interesting. But, uh, scary. We can buy property. Like as in... Yeah. So, yes, we can. Australian citizens can legally own real estate. Okay, can I say something? Boyton, we're coming for you. <laughs> this is something I've always wanted to do, and I've talked about it before. Do you guys want to find literally the cheapest bit of property anywhere in the world? Done. I'm on it. I'm on real estate. No, no. Time. Like, I'm talking anywhere. You know Trollman's on it. Romania. Any, Romania, <laughs> Romania. Fucking Hungary. Like, anywhere where we can find... Like, dude, South Asia, Southeast Asia, India. Just a plot of land. I don't care if it's a fucking room. I don't care if it's a cupboard. But let's just buy a plot of land. Yeah. Just so we can say it belongs to that's not right. Yeah, that's not right. Has land abroad. We'll make it. Do you want to make it like? We'll make it like a mecca. <laughs> you know what I mean? Once a year, there's a pilgrimage, and the true believers go there. Go out to this plot of land. 
and we make a we make a Lumi. It's like a Burning Man, but we, different. We do a Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> we watch old Simpson episodes and Van Damme movies. Fuck yeah, that sounds yeah, sick. Man. Let's I it. wanted to do it for the D.com years ago, but let's do it for that's not right. So it's kind of like Burning Man. Done. <laughs> Trollman's already put the deposit down, just right now. Dude, I've just sold his missus' car. Dude, we can buy... The Gets, he the sold mo- the Gets! The money for the Jeep came through and he's just boom, just put a deposit on some land We right can now. buy land in Hungary. How much? $800 per square metre. <laughs> to one square metre? <laughs> Done! It's just standing room oh. only? If you want to get real cheap... And that's what we pitch it as! That's not right, standing room only. <laughs> if you want to get real cheap, we can go to Estonia. Estonia, oh. Why are we picking all these Eastern Bloc countries? Like, yeah, yeah I want to buy one in Bratislava. <laughs> I reckon, dude, honestly, I reckon somewhere in, um, like, uh, Bangladesh, like, Bangladesh, or, like, even the, like, the Bengali states of India, like, the real West, are, like... Dude, Boyton, Virginia. <laughs> Wait, let me look up Asia. <laughs> You're fixated on that outdoor dining. Oh, dude, it looks so nice, man, with the river there and everything. Where? Boyton. Boyton. <laughs> Moving to Boyton. I'm going to get a Boyton t-shirt. Let's start a cult in Boyton. Oh, a yeah. perfect place to start a cult. Virginia. Bobby's yeah. Believers. Bobby's Believers. Chris Brown can come past to a show. <laughs> Virginia. Dude, we can buy in the Philippines. Right? <laughs> oh my God, in the Philippines. Fucking like troll them in the random places. I love mm. it. It's a cool breeze tempers the sun's heat. Very I'm quiet. Sold. Very sold. quiet. Nine grand. All right, we're talking, you're getting yourself, own a piece of sunshine at the woodlands. All right. Honestly, would you guys save money towards to do that? Yes. Dude, I'd go there. I'd just go pitch a tent. Like, That'd be the coolest thing ever, dude. I'd save money. I'm, I'm saving money right now to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know I always wanted my land. Yeah, we, we go there oh, and check it tomatoes. Dude, we know. You've dude, told us a million we times. We plant tomatoes there. We come back once a year. Yeah, they're growing. Bay leaves, oregano plants. It's in there. I'm once frying a year. up some halloumi. Yeah, once a year we do like a farmer's market barbecue. Who are these idiots? Oh, Dude, yeah. I'm telling you, like, Eastern Bloc countries, man, or Asia. No, no, do you want to do some research? I am I, doing, re- I'm doing research right now. <laughs> 100%, man. I reckon we do, I've, I, I'm telling you, just for a laugh, I reckon it'd be funny. I'll put away a couple grand over a year period. Just to be able to say, that's not right, it has land abroad. We have land abroad. Doesn't home. matter how much we're it land is. We're landowners. Doesn't matter how much of where it is, no, we have no, it. No, 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 no. No, no, we have it. And we'll just send someone there, if we can get someone local to put up a sign that just says, do not touch, you're <laughs> trespassing with a skull and crossbones. Private property. Yeah. <laughs> a skull and crossbones <laughs> and our logo, just underneath it. <laughs> the headphones. Mystery placard pops up overnight, locals baffled. Oh, like the Georgia Guidestones, just yeah. these weird headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Some rules. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's mad. Done. Sounds like a plan. Wait. Let's go eat. Okay. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, fuck it. We can buy some land in Siberia. Oh, that'd be tough. Too cold for me. <laughs> Bobby likes the heat. Such a pussy, man. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> Too cold. I'm the first How much is land in Siberia? Fucking nothing. <laughs> Bag of potatoes and some turnips? You know, you know where I always wanted to live? Some Alaska. Turnips. Where? Alaska. Why? There's no know. sunlight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's better for me. Do There's some, no do sunlight. some um, hole fishing. Ice fishing. Yeah, man. Oh, no, hang on. Alaska, it goes it goes 180. You know, with the change of seasons in yeah, Alaska? Yeah, it stays dark. It yeah. stays dark. One, one time it stays dark, and then and you've then got sunlight it, for like, like 20 11, hours a day. Yeah. yeah. Actually, a great vampire movie set in Alaska. Um, 30 Days of Night, I believe. So, is Ian Summer holding in it? No, it's not It's not the cutie, though. It's not the cutie pie. <laughs> People are saying Estonia. Josh Hartnett. Isn't He's that the guy from... Um, 40 fucking, days and 40 yeah, nights. Yeah. yeah, it's cute. Very cute. I was going to say... Um, Getting a bit old now, but... Insomnia. Is that the name of the movie? With Al, uh, with, um, Al Pacino and yes. Robin Williams? Yep. Great movie. Yep. Dark. That was dark. People are saying Estonia or Central or South America. <laughs> Cheapest places. Bolivia. Done. Oh, dude, we're going to Bolivia. Dude. I'm serious. I'm not shot in the first day. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> Three dudes. No, Johnny comes the out the next day. Hat. He, be- he starts a cartel. You know? <laughs> Doesn't speak a word of Spanish, but starts a cut. Yeah, no matter where I go, I'll start something. Yeah. I'll get followers, I believe. Oh, Propatia Boliviano. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see it now. We just rock up. You know what's funny? We we'll rock up. The three of us are heading out to some fucking farm in the middle of nowhere in like a rusty ute. We get there, and the dude, like whoever's there with like the big mo and the tats, just goes straight to you. She's like, Buenos dias, hermanos. And, we, and you just turn and nod, and like they drag us away. You guys, like, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> 
<laughs> I actually point to you too. I'm like, yeah, take yeah, them away. Take you them just away. put on a pair of mirrored aviators. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like you're, you're done. Done. We some boy. Dude, some Cuban chick comes out of nowhere, like some tall, dark beauty. <laughs> He's just a hey, puppy. Just drapes like, herself on what me. What the fuck happened? What's going on here? Oh, five seconds. Boys, I found it. I found it. <laughs> is it in Boyton? The lot is, right, 2.6 acres, has been fenced, plenty of water. It's like almost jungle. 17,000 US. 17,000. Dude. Oh. We start a rebel faction, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Look at this place, man. And the place is called Magdalena. <laughs> Magdalena. That's mad. Dude. <laughs> That's mad. I'd live there, man. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's got the palm trees and shit. I like oh, it. Oh, dude. <laughs> We've even got our own little walk trail and everything. It's two acres. I'll be able to find those reeds they chew We've on. We've got a river like bank with, with our own people to That's take fine. advantage of. <laughs> take advantage of work. This guy's got like a, a big peacock feather just fanning this guy. You know what I mean? Eating Getting fruit. Getting fed grapes. Yeah. <laughs> Nick and I are just digging fucking ditches. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to do some more research today. Cheapest land no, in just the world. literally find the cheapest... Well, people are saying Estonia. Okay. But... Seriously, though, Boydton, let's just go there. Dude, you can buy a landing boy for 20 grand for nothing. We already have followers. <laughs> There's 60 people that are waiting for us. We'll be treated, treated like me. gods. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting to fan me with their fans. We get off the plane wearing our That's Not Right t-shirts and all, automatically like the press just come running up. Ah! The three of them. <laughs> <laughs> come with me, boys. Guys, we just stretched that out to three hours. All right, all right. <laughs> with that gibberish right. at the end. Shout out, shout out to Estonia, <laughs> Siberia, Boyton. 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 But seriously, Virginia. Boyton, Virginia, actually looks like a really nice place. So shout out to you guys. Actually looks like a nice yeah, town. Thank you so. for listening. Yeah, thank thank you guys. We're not taking a piss. No, 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 no. Thank we you. Like, find it amazing. Johnny actually wants to come there. So we, is, we just find it amazing that people on the other side of the planet are actually tuning in to hear yeah, our shit. Yeah, so That's thank it. you. Thank you we so much. say it like that. It is the truth. Yeah. It's the fucking truth, man. Johnny's sweating up a storm here, man. Look at him. I'm hot and I'm hungry. All right, all right. All right. Cool, man. All right. Leverage out. Ah!